Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran, and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is now episode 364. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Justin Fields trade, Caleb Williams, the Vikings' next quarterback, and give you guys some hoops talk, giving a panic meter for some respective NBA teams and talk about the New Orleans Pelicans because they're, they're looking dangerous right now. Mm. Uh, fellas, how you doing? Dells, Riv, you guys were on vacation. How you guys feeling? So, Riv, tell us about Orlando, brother. Um, Looked uh, like you had a blast. Yeah, no, it was Where'd a great. Stay? Okay, damn. Sorry, my bad. That was like five <laughs> questions back yeah, to back. To back. Um, no, we stayed at Airbnb in like a resort, like like resort house complex thing. Like it had houses with pools in it and then it had like a resort with a pool, arcade, like all this nice stuff, all drinks, right. volleyball, basketball court. So it was really dope to be out there. And it was like 30, 40 minutes away from Orlando. But um, yeah, man, I got drunk every what day. What pink drink? <laughs> the pink, yo, dude, y'all would love it. Yeah? This, this was fruity drink galore. Listen, oh, let me tell man. you. Right up our alley, man. Perfect. So you get, the first day we had 16 hours pouches, margarita pouches, you pay 14, a refill is $11. Cool. I like that's that. That's a come up. That's yeah. a, oh, no, that's because I'm drinking like seven, eight, and it's just like, all right. But the next day, I'm like, because I saw some dude have this big punch, okay. and I'm like, mm-hmm. I want it. And they, you know, you're supposed to share it. It's 50 oz. It's a big cup. Big 50 cup. ounces? 50 yes. Oh, wow. Ounces? Yes. Is that not OZ? No, yeah, 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 I, heard yeah, it. Right. I was like, wow, yeah, bro, yeah. fuck. 50 ounces of straight. And she said, I was like, how much liquor is in it? She was like, it's eight shots, essentially. So I was like, you're supposed to share it with somebody. You faced it? I didn't face just one. Oh, my God. I faced oh two God. of them, a pink Starburst. I faced two of them. When I tell you. You remember I, the day? I do. But when I tell Fuck. you, this was before we went out. This is when we were at the resort. I drink those two. This is your daytime. Yeah. So I got home and I'm Crazy. like, I'm drunk. I can't get up the steps. I think I put, <laughs> I, think I put a hole in the wall in oh, the house because oh, I, fell, I fell down the stairs. And I was just wobbling all up and down downtown. Got drunk more downtown. But for the most part, it was just good vibes, good energy. The people were cool. You know, the drinking was dope. And uh, I had a great time. I'm glad, bro. Yeah. I'm glad. Sometimes I worry about you, man. Well, how about what you drink? <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, you weren't your on vacation. Wasn't rocking the next day. Yeah, the, show oh, really, the, crazy. the thing is, I really, if it's like those type of drinks, fruity drinks, if it's not like Hennessy or nothing, I don't have a headache, a hangover, nothing. I'm pretty much good. Uh, I saw the, the video of you doing karaoke. I, I love that. that was, I love hilarious. that video. That was after the first punch. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, were that, up there singing your heart out. Yeah, that was, uh, that was after singing the first punch. Singing to Mario? Part. Yes. Let nice. me love you. Yeah. That's the only way you can really drink if it if it tastes fruity, at least for me. Yeah, it's just so much better. Uh, I've I become a beer sure. guy recently, but I will say margarita by itself in a class alone, most definitely. How is that transition like? It's actually what's the recipe to black out, for sure. Uh, what's my favorite beer? Bud Light. That's definitely number beer one. Beer makes you black out? You have tequila to start the night. Just okay. you, you basically rip that until you're like, all right. I can't do this anymore. No more tequila. Mm. You end the night with three beers. Three beers. Three beers. Good night. I can't drink beer. I, don't I like can't it. either. It yeah. tastes terrible. It does taste terrible. It's really, uh, I don't. I really have become. I. I it's an acquired taste, but I fuck with Corona. I love Corona. Bud Light, Miller Light, still growing a taste for it. Coors Light's not bad. Modelo, I like, but it gives me a little bit of a stomach ache. Uh, Sam Summers, great. That was like one of the first beers that really turned me on to beer too. But yeah, really, I still will have tequila by itself, no doubt. It's way like better. Maybe I'm a dad or something. I'll get a beer taste, but nah. right now I don't got it. She's not moving me. No, we never. had a photographer down there too, so we got some pics, some videos. I can't wait to those drop. What was the That's nightlife tough. like? Was it like clubs, <laughs> bars? So it's like think of Hoboken, yeah. but think better roads. Think. A little bit smaller. It's very underrated, bro. The roads over there are nice. Yeah, and, and, and just think better clubs. Like, it's just an all different type of people. And outside. the weather must have been gas. The weather, well, it's like hot during the day, and then it gets mm-hmm. cool, cool at yep. night. Like, that beautiful, I could still go out with a shirt, some mm-hmm. jeans. Yeah, now nah, it was it was actually hilarious because it was half the block black and then half the block white. So it's mm-hmm. like you got the black clubs. They playing Lil Baby. They playing, Tough. you know, Yo Gotti and stuff like that. They and have got, segregated clubs? Or not even like, it's, it's funny that it's, it's it's weird to say it like that, but, but it's like, it, it's really weird to say it like that. But it'd be like, you get that, you, so you make a left, 
And then you're like, okay, black smile, black smile, black smile. You see, the, you hear the music they're playing. Uh-huh. You get further down, it's like a Cotton Eye Joe down the block. Why it's are you like, pointing at me when you're saying I, Cotton Eye Joe? Pointing, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just pointing down. It's like, like it's just, a, it was just a, a, a not a disconnect because everybody was vibing, everybody uh-huh. was connected, but it was like a clear, obvious which side was which mm-hmm. side, you know. So it was you fun and Dallas kind of went to two different worlds. You went to the heat in the summer, and you went to Boston. It's that's, still up north. I love Boston, man. Yeah, that's, that's that's one of my favorite cities. Last time I was in Boston, it was one of my favorite trips I've been on. It's I dope. haven't been there yet. Oh, it's it's, it's a movie. It's you so walkable, like you everything. Do up there, buddy? Um, went to the Celtics game. Went to yeah, some. I want to hear about the other stuff. Went to some thrift stores. Saw JB Masterclass. JB Masterclass. <laughs> oh, that dunk at the end. Of the Al Horford oh, Masterclass Horford, too. Season hot twenty three. Uh, it was definitely more of a pen vibe than a drinking vibe <laughs> for sure. That was it was a cool trip. Me and my girl. But it, the uh, the night of the game, we went to this bar. Met up with Joey. Because yeah, he's yeah. a Suns fan. He was there. Um, fuck Joey. But anyhow, <laughs> I got... They had strawberry margaritas there. Oh, those went crazy. That strawberry was like the only marks. time I really drank. Mm. I had three of those, and it went down like water. Yeah. Um, so it, was, it was cool. It was Rank calm. the margaritas. Mango margarita, strawberry margarita, regular classic margarita. Strawberry is classic regular's, regular's last. Regular is last. Strawberry is classic at all. Mango really? Yeah. I respect yeah. that. I fuck I, with mango, too. I'm a personal mango one, but I, I get the love for strawberry. 1A, one 1B. One I'm fine with I that. I can't do that. No, strawberry, strawberry, yeah, strawberry yeah. is the one for me, like a clear gap. Fair enough. Didn't you see Paul Pierce at the bar? You Facts. Was like, that was yeah. crazy. Yeah. He, just, he just came out. He was like, yo. <laughs> yo I saw Mac McClung on the street. I kid you not, nobody walked up to him. Wow. Yeah, it was like. Him? No, I didn't actually. I was drunk. I didn't care. Like, I felt up. like I was the bigger guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like that's, I was the first, one. that's the first thing you thought. Yo, nobody woke up to yo, you. Bro. Yo, no, it was like, because it was like 2 30 in the morning. I'm in the car with this girl, and I'm like, that's Matt McClung. She's yeah, like, who? Dunk contest winner. I was like, yeah, he won the dunk contest. She was like, oh, you're going to get all grabbed? I was like, nah. just walking around? No, nah, I was in her car. But he was just like, oh, yeah, he he was on a block with a pizza. So I was just like, and I'm watching. I'm like, nobody like knows who this is. And I was like, he should come get my own. Have you guys ever had the urge to go up to a celebrity in person? Have you guys, how many times have you had that actual encounter? Our, well, when we were at Summer League, yeah, uh, that happened a few times. But the time that I got most nervous was... Uh, next to Yaka Pertle, because he was <laughs> tall as yeah, fuck. Yeah, that's a big ass. Dude. No, remember when no, we got Chuck, next to Jalen Duran? You got scared. We got oh scared. no, 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 we, we didn't get scared. We, we didn't get scared, up. but we, we saw we big ass dude, and shit, we weren't bro. sure if it was Jalen Duran or not. But it was just like it had to be. He was who so else big, is this bro. tall? That was that's when we was at the wire show. Yo, bro, we walked and we're like, R.I.P. Like you can feel like his just his like presence. We're like, who the fuck is this? Big as hell. He was huge. Oh, D. Now, that's only happened to me one time, though. When I seen With Trayvon, Trayvon Duvall. Duvall. Yeah. I almost, yeah, almost, <laughs> that's yeah, almost like a child. I, I felt yeah. like I had Crushed. to force Riv to go and, and get a picture. I almost from passed him. out. It was actually. He was like, bro, 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 bro. That's Trayvon <laughs> Duvall, bro. Yeah, like, I was bro. just like, I'm going to be honest. I don't know who that is. Nah, bro. That's a. Riv Jersey had a crush on Trayvon Duvall. I wouldn't yeah. say it like that, but yes. He was a cool dude. No, no, no. I think I would. Your PSN profile picture was Trayvon. <laughs> Yo, he is in profile. No, it was. That, that, was the, that was the young fanboy days for sure. Now, he, he was, was nice. Oh, he was so nice in uh-huh. high school. Oh, my God. It was different. So, it what was, happened to Trayvon? He couldn't shoot. Mm. Yeah. Also, smaller guard. He's Left a Jersey early. legend, though. That's him, what Isaiah I, that's Briscoe. What he was mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Nah, Isaiah Briscoe. He went to, at, did he go to uh, Syracuse? He went to yeah. Kentucky. Oh, he went to Kentucky. They played against each other. I met Anthony Morrow when I was mad young. For real? Yeah. That was in Garden State. Nah, I met him uh, just on, on Pleasant. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of, you, where was that was Eric? Do you remember the Peach Jam team that Isaiah Briscoe won with at AAU? They had the NJ players. They had the red okay, jerseys. Okay, okay. Trey was on that team. Got it. That's when they had like 11 three-star, four-star, five-star recruits. It was like insane. The only others I've met, Nick Mangle, and I met Bart Scott. Nice. Both that guy's on, randomly. That was I tough. met big play slay in person but i didn't meet him i seen yeah, him yeah this was I before remember. we yeah. interviewed him yeah so. i went to a jets practice and he was giving autographs and i was about to go up and i guess you know uh when i was approaching he was just on his last autograph and i'm calling his name trying to get him back like yo yo slay yo because <laughs> i'm trying to see if that's him too because i don't know what number he was wearing but now nah, he just left but yeah that's the first time um i seen like a celebrity like that other times I can't really remember, but I, I saw Lamar Odom at Twenty Four Hour Fitness. Yeah, I did not go out to him. Dave East, Dave East at Blink. That was nuts. He goes on IG Live. He's just getting a lift at Blink Paramus. <laughs> that was crazy. And I was in his IG Live. Uh-oh. I think Shannon Sharp was in Hackensack not too long ago. Uh, he, okay. was, he was at the Total Wine. Yeah, he was at the shops at Riverside. Yeah, yeah, he was by here not too long ago. That was a the viral video of him and his fit. <laughs> like the that's fit. where he was. Yes, yes. he was yeah. in. No he was way. Nothing. I was excited when uh, John got that video of Sharif Cooper for me. 
That was a W. Yeah. He was real for that. That was one of them that ones too for me. That was funny ass video. John is funny. Uh, yeah. y- y'all John's all weird see, and shit. Uh, he was all weird and shit in that video. Uh, y'all he was see, starstruck, just like you. <laughs> uh, so y'all know that I got the cameo from Le'Veon Bell for my birthday. Yeah. Facts. Y'all see recently what he's been in the... Oh yeah, he's, he's been on OnlyFans. Only wilding the fuck out. We nah, talked about crazy. that when it dropped. Remember I went on and y'all were going crazy? Really? I was like, it's three dollars, some shit. You're like, damn, you're gonna pay for that? Like, <laughs> oh what? shit, I forgot about that. You're a freak that. for mentioning that. He is a freak for mentioning. <laughs> that. I just remember it. <laughs> Lady I remember Bell. It. This is like, like a few months. But this now the price the just went season. up on my cameo. <laughs> now it's up. Oh, he has only fans. He, he does. does. He's going stupid and insane. He'll send you the videos later. Send it. That was, was like, yo, breaking news. <laughs> Lady Lady Bell. Bell. What happened? He's like, yo, first, maybe first got fifty OnlyFans. people to sign up, half off. What do you say? I asked y'all that question about the celebrities though, because. I don't know. Sometimes I'll be just like, I'm more so that person that'll just leave people alone. Yeah, me too. E- even if it's a mega, mega star. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't if fail. Like nah, 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 I if I saw LeBron, alone. if I saw LeBron, I have to go. I'd alone. moan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I see Steph, bro, I don't know what I'm going to do, bro. It's, it's going to be some crazy shit. Like, I, I actually don't want to meet him in person because I don't think I'd be it able to It depends on what they're doing. If they just walk in, sure. But like, let's say you go to a restaurant, you see LeBron eating at the restaurant. You going up to him? No. I'm, I'm not. There are certain situations where you're just not going to go up to somebody. And you know there's going to be mad people that are also going up to The thing is, there's not many people that have a chance to have an interaction with LeBron. So maybe that's one of those where it's just like, hey, I saw him in person. I was pretty fucking close. I'll take that. But I don't know. At dinner, that's pretty tough. I I wouldn't do that. That means you probably had a high ass in... Like oh, you're, now you're, you you're probably like no one of the ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. saw him at fucking IHOP. <laughs> IHOP, IHOP. You IHOP. gotta say what's up, like yeah, that's 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 IHOP, IHOP, right. bro. You know you're gonna you're get right. him. Come on, like if we're at like Roof Chris, uh, yeah, Waffle House, you in the yeah, hood, yeah, bro. Yeah, Come yeah. on, that too. Let's, when let's I used to work at Chit Chat Diner, I saw Brock Lesnar. Um, really, yeah, that's yeah. tough. Brock Lesnar was there. He just sitting down. He's not a person I would just go up to though. I I think he just want to punch me in my face. Yeah, yeah. People said that yo, like Brock Lesnar's mean. Like my coworkers were like, yo, he's mean, man. Like I try to approach him, he was just like, get the fuck out of here. (laughs) I'm dead. Yeah, he just kind of just waved him off, and I was like, should I expect that from Brock Lesnar though? So yeah, Yeah, it is what it is. Brock Lesnar is a scary ass dude. So those when did you all get back? Saturday night. Saturday night. night. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up, man. I'm happy you had your little vacay with your little Celtics. I'm happy you did too. We got. Did you go on Luke Bryan uh, concert too? No, that Not was that name? wasn't from Florida. We went to um, mm, Lay Post. What's his name? Fake <sighs> fan. Fuck Jordan. Uh, Jordan Davis. Uh, Same okay. name as the Eagles player. Mm. Um, we went to that. Yeah, that first video is from Florida too. Okay. I was just like, I'm just gonna do both. You know. Respect that. A one Instagram post a year is done. Now we're on we, to 2025. We need to freshen up, folks. Riv, you had a long weekend. You need to freshen up. We going to freshen up yeah, with that, some magic. That mind. brain fog you have right now is probably cold. Magic Mind is sponsoring today's show. <laughs> it gets you on your grind. Amen to that. Amen to that. Listen, I, I got a Twitch stream to, to log in on after this, so we're here. Ah, this tastes so good. I let it taste of Magic Mind. They just re upped our supply. Shook it. I got all this stuff at the bottom. Definitely still. should have shook it. Damn it. If you guys remember from previous episodes, we were asking them supplies with some more. They did right. Nice, Max. They're sponsoring the show. You get one month for free when you're subscribing for three months at www.magimind.com slash pick aside. And with our code pick aside 20, you get an addition, you get an extra 20% off, which gets you to 56% off a subscription. Use Magimind to lock into today, to, to, to today's show. Holy shit. I started like, fuck. It's all right. It's because you haven't drank yours yet. You gotta Facts. Take shot. It's because you haven't drank yours yet. That's really what it is. <laughs> Oh man! And while we do that, shout out to my brother Santos. Santos, who's one been locked in on Pick Aside for God knows how long, but also been locked in while I've been streaming too. Apparently, he got me a jersey that I was supposed to open last show. I fucking knew it, man. I fucking knew it. Juan Sodi? Nah, he really is just a generational human being. Gonna show us? <laughs> Yo, he is fucking crazy. Yo, brother, bro. man, I don't know who that is. Juan, Juan Soto. Soto. Juan Soto. I'm supposed to know that. You're supposed to be a baseball fan, bro. Nah. You don't know who Juan Soto is. Oh, I know. No, I didn't know that. It has no name on it. I yeah, don't know his number. Yeah, that's our Yankee jersey. Sorry. Oh, I don't hate that. Yeah, I know who bro. Juan Soto is. The guy you traded for, yes. right? All I'm loose. praying that this number gets retired. Okay. That's how I'm feeling with this guy. Hard Yo, jersey. another year of fraudulency for you guys. No, we're coming for it, baby. You always are. You guys no, last like, year we weren't. You're like the Sixers. Last year we weren't. <laughs> Not even trolling. Kept the stack with you last year, right? We weren't that That's good last fact, year. Yeah. I'll tell you when we're nice. We're nice now. 
Damn, but Blake Snell going to not nah, for real though. Garrett Cole's hurt. Garrett Cole's out till probably June. Judge is going to be okay, but then Lemayhew just got injured with a bone bruise on his foot. What are you looking at over there? I'm looking at prospects right now. Oh, talk to me. They have receiving yard plays mm. for okay. the season now. That is hard. Though. And these are interesting. There were two free agent moves that happened that involved some big time wide receivers. Two offseason moves, I should say. Calvin Ridley was signed by the Tennessee Titans on prospects. His receiving yards play is 875 and a half yards. Disrespected the shit out of him. More or less. Riv, are you locking in with Magic Mon and prospects right now? Yo, I'll I, tell you what. I need Mons need to get fixed. They keep showing these crown things at the thing. Bro, I can't. I can't. You want to know what it is? What? It's not allowed in New York no more. Now you have now it's actual contest in New York. Did not tell y'all that. Yep, yep. I told y'all it got it got shut down in New York. It got, so I got I got to I got to I got to use somebody else. In no, this. no, we're screwed. They were screwed, bro. Okay, I don't like that. Take Jordan Poole's fourth quarter points. But the good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is. <laughs> that it's available in other states. Okay. So for us, we don't get get to enjoy prospects like we want to, but in a bunch of other states, you can. 25 plus states. Oh, yeah. You can enjoy it the way that we want to enjoy the app. Like As I, I mentioned earlier, Yankees. Calvin Ridley, 875 and a half receiving oh. yards, more or less, 875. <laughs> so Calvin Ridley needs to get 876 with the Titans the next season. That's, that's all day. I'm, I'm, that's the more, right? Yeah, more. We're going more. Slamming the more. I don't know if anyone's ever done this before. I'm him. You look like you coach. Okay. <laughs> sure. You look like you coach. What's under that? A Bronco shirt? No, this is just a Under Armour long sleeve. Because this is what the actual ball I mean, play if, with. It, if it's the jersey, perfect. Hammer, hammer, hammer the more. Sleeve. Pay attention. Lock and focus. I already said I'm going more because last year he had over 1,000 his first yes, year back after more. missing And two we're expecting years. a Will Levis jump this year? You tell me. Jordan Love or Will Levis, man? <laughs> it's Jordan Love all day. I was wrong on that. I'm not high on Will Levis. <laughs> you gotta hold the moment it happens to the best of us to leave it at that. What? Now stop you saying that. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not saying moment. anything I'm about that. Get away from huh? him. Thanks, man. Um, I'm not mad at that. You being high in the moment. He threw four touchdowns in his first game. It was lit. But where does this come from? Will Levis is inaccurate. To be fair, I don't think any of us have been down. No, 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 no. I'm for not saying that. I'm just saying to say, that's it, you're done. After that first game, it's not game, that I'm done. It's removed. that Will Levis, his pocket presence is very bad. He takes a lot of sacks. But it's also in due part. A, no, it's also Titans in due part. offensive line stinks. It's, that's not wrong, but it's also a him problem. Mm. He And that was a problem dating back to college in his we college team. We saw Tannehill team. be bad because of that offensive line. And, and honestly, I feel like people's images of Tannehill is skewed because. Of his time with that terrible offensive line. I agree with you. He's a little erratic and his 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 ball placement is spotty. But I think with a cleaned up offensive line like they've tried to do this offseason, Lloyd Cushenberry, assuming with that the draft falls the way that it does, Fashanu at worst, at best case scenario, Joe Alt, he sh- he should have a situation next season that he's gonna be put in place to succeed. Here's the disconnect though, mm-hmm. is Correct. I feel like Whenever we talk about quarterbacks entering a year where they got to prove it, we always assume that it's going to be a breakout. I don't know if Will Levis is going to break out. I'm with you. I think Will Levis could maybe just be this past season Sam Howell, where he has some high highs, but there's turnovers, there's fumbles, there's inaccuracies. Will Levis, you look at his numbers outside of his debut game. Mm Mm-hmm. It, they were they weren't good, you mm-hmm. know. So and that game versus uh, Miami, he was also solid. Yeah, when you know they the were down. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You know, but for the entirety of the game, they weren't that good. So they were struggling with the ball. He had eight game. passing touchdowns last season. Four of them came in his debut. Mm-hmm. So that means for the other games, it was four touchdowns, four interceptions, and his passer rating with those touchdowns in totality in the regular season was eighty four point two. Yep. So we're talking about the Titans were getting bad quarterback play. They just want to see what they got in Will Levis because he was a second round pick. They didn't invest much in him, but I think the way Mason Rudolph played down the stretch of last season, Mason Rudolph, if Will Levis doesn't play play it? good, he can be the starter. You know, do you think it's Will Levis's job locked? Not even a QB competition. No, I think it will be a competition. Okay, I think they might give him the edge uh, because they want to see what he Upside. is. Same reason with the Commanders last year with Howell and Brissett. Brissett should have been a day one starter. And the way Brissett played when he came in the game, Sammy was doing his thing. Magnified that. The Steelers are doing the opposite. 
the Steelers are putting the safe quarterback as their QB1 and has their more talented quarterback as their QB2. Won't say anything because that's going to be the first topic of the show when we talk about it. Yes. But I, I think that that makes sense, though. I, and it's also, you have to give your fan base something to be passionate about. If you tell a Titans fan, Mason Rudolph is the starter. They're going to ride. If you tell them Will Levis, oh, Will Levis is talented. Maybe he could be something. You give them something to not complain about because there is faith and a young quarterback there, and I understand it. But I think the high number of sacks he takes, his sack rate, his inaccuracies, those are all things that need to be improved. And expecting a ginormous leap from him in those areas, I think is asking for too much. I agree. You know, so that that's where I'm coming from. But with Ridley, it's 876 yards. I'm going to go with the more on that. We have two Got other it. receivers that move teams this offseason. Deontay Johnson with the Carolina Panthers. I don't care the number. Folks. This is criminally low. It's 826. I'll do the more. Pretty comfortable. It's more, and it's not even a question. Did they, Adam Thielen have more than this last year with Bryce Young? You think that's more on him or more on what they think of Bryce? Cook. I think it's a little bit of both. I think Deontay Johnson was used terribly in Pittsburgh yeah. uh, outside of the year with Big Ben. Now this is when Deontay Johnson gets back in those DJ Moore conversations. You think so? <laughs> he'll, never, <laughs> he'll never come back, buddy. He only had a thousand we're yards in different, last year. We're in different conversations. Oh, hey, after last yards. season, agreed. But like I just said, he got to get this is the hard, season where we see, hard for Deontay. It is going to be hard. Gonna he got to with Caleb too. He got to get into the conversation so. under DJ Moore. You know, we got to hope for. Kenan takes his targets. He won't. He's going to get some targets. Stand ten, bro. Stand ten. Don't fall back. Don't be an idiot. I thought you was a Bears guy. I am the Bears guy. I am. And Lions. We're pushing DJ Moore agenda. It's messy, bro. It's so messy. We're pushing DJ Moore top ten agendas. Come on. What? Lock, lock what makes you the Bears guy again? Uh, because I was on them. No, he's not the Bears super guy. Super early on. He's, he's a part of the Bears season. team. He's not the Bears. It's when Riff fell off. You kind of took control. Which is of why that. I'm the Bears guy. The he's, reason he's why the Drew's guy. the Bears guy is because somewhere between <laughs> week twelve in that area, Drew said, "Listen, the Bears defense—they're playing good," and he started picking them a couple weeks in a row in the pick them. And, and Over that's the lines? how. Did you call that upset? That's right? how the man will change that hands. That Dells. You Listen, all, it was also this a is Mr. Fishy. Honest, Mr. Non, most out. unbiased fishy, analyst in the world. Hurt, yeah. You're like, I'm off. And Dallas. Dallas. Like, you should be honest. <laughs> and of let's be honest. When does he really just go out there and give me credit like that? Dallas. Not often. We're giving him the mantle because he picked them four times when I've picked them. No, all but year. I also gave sound analysis. You're of picking their them against the Chiefs and shit. That's how. That should make <laughs> me the guy. Well, that was uh, early in the season. When you know, the Broncos against the Chiefs, but he fell off. Well, I was right. Right. He, was right. he fell off. He's yeah, right hold that, dummy. Yeah. He's right. Uh, I did, I called it right both times. Um, he said at home. He said when Justin Fields was off the team and injured, I'm gone. That's when that defense was really locking in towards the back end, of course. With Drew being in or out on a team is so black and white. This is because ridiculous. If you if you guy. are if you are I'm the Caleb guy. So I if you like. are talking about the Bears Come. in a critical way, <laughs> you are out on them. Come on. What do you, what do you mean? From Drew's perspective, if you're not overly praising this team all the well, you're time, out on the Bears you're now. not you're not in on them. No, right? Fields, Fields is on the Steelers. So? DJ Moore, Jalen Johnson, I'm, I'm Steeler Nation. Nation. I know. Yeah. Brown, <laughs> Browns too. No, that was just an agenda. Imagine that. You're, oh, you're off that. Oh, you're you're done. I'm not like you were pushing that hard. No, I'm not like. Uh, and low key, he had Lamar for MVP. He, he had did. ties. Oh my god, he yeah. has ties. In that one. No, I just yeah, yeah. Listen, 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 listen. Yeah, I think I, do. I was a Browns fan. No, that was just an agenda that I felt strongly about. Something I wanted to really put my stamp on the mm. season. I, which I appreciate did. that I, because we're gonna we're gonna clarify that in just a bit. This last wide receiver, Jerry Judy, seven twenty six on the Cleveland Browns, just new, got a contract new extension, forty one million guaranteed. Man, he better show the fuck up. I'll he be better. honest, something. I'm gonna need to wait and, and, and see after week one. What's the number? Because I'm gonna need to see how Deshaun Watson. I don't, I don't looks. think that. I don't think that works like that. The number like the, no, no, no. I know this is all preseason uh, now. Jerry's had nine seventy two and seven fifty eight the last two years. He's probably gonna get it. I'll say more. You know, I saw Jerry Judy. This Jerry Judy stat that I'm glad that Drew didn't get his hands on first. I was able was to get my hands on it. Open rating. It's the fact that he uh, last season was top ten against man coverage. I, but I've said this. Yeah, he was he was top ten against man coverage uh, over the last. Several years since he's been in the NFL, five last five years, he's been one of the best separators and according to PFF raw separation. Just Robert apologize Robert. to me. About what? He said he's CD Lamb. Judy was also one of the lowest for ESPN's You know what I said. You know what I said. So are you telling me that if uh Jerry Judy was on the Cowboys with Dak oh, Prescott instead of CD Lamb? A, no, I didn't say all that. I will say if you put them both together, that shit gets crazy. What what what, what, what CD and Jerry? It's a great wide receiver duo. Oh, oh, I thought you were saying that. 
Well, no. Shut what I've been now. saying about Jerry is that he is an amazing route runner and a great separator. I wonder why there's such a difference. And you said that I was dumb for that. No, you said because you was pushing him like go. top. CD 10, top also five. had drop problems in the early. Well, yeah. Yeah. apparently he's. What did you say? What in was the last that in five separation? Years. What in the last we, five years? Oh, interesting. Also, get but for whatever reason. ESPN's open score does not like Jerry Judy. He was mm. the tenth percentile, or excuse what is me, ESPN now? he was thirty uh, eighth <laughs> this past season. <laughs> you know what's the thing openness. about advanced stats is that you know PFF can look at something differently. ESPN can look at something differently as well because they both track their stuff differently. Yep. Yeah. But he was the year prior, twenty twenty two was ranked eleven, twenty twenty one was tenth. But this past Jerry year Judy's a good wide receiver. Forty one million for his production as of right now. I can understand where it seems a He's little a erratic, but. Uh, I wouldn't. Say, I wouldn't go that far. Steve Smith said a Hall I, of Fame wide receiver. I got you. You still. You still full. Just a guy. Uh, he's not. Steve Smith knows what he's talking about. I'm hoping, uh, for Cleveland Brown's sake, is that Deshaun Watson figures it out. He, it has to be him because it, that, that's your boy. And hopefully Nick Chubb is okay. before. Before. Yes. Before. 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 before, please, before. Before. Jesus. before, yeah. I mean, he was amazing. He was top five. He was fucking nuts. So not speaking on him as a person, I don't know if you can separate the art it's, and the person. It's almost impossible. It, it is very impossible. It, I can. It's very he's hard. It's very now. hard. But he's not good right now. If you're not separating a football player, do you have belief in Deshaun Watson? That's your boy. He's ha- okay. Can you stop? <laughs> it's just, I don't want to be associated with that. However, I will say, if he's back in form. Then yeah, I'm in. They signed Jacoby Brissett, right? No, the Browns did. No, 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 no. They signed Joe Flacco. That was Washington. Oh, no, 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 no. Jameis Flacco was on a Colts. Oh, oh, Jameis Winston. 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 Mm-hmm. Winston. Mm-hmm. Joe Flacco went to the Colts. Colts. A Pro Bowl. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Joe Flacco went to the Colts. Tyler Huntley is also there. They have all black quarterbacks actually. Tyler Huntley's with Cleveland. Yeah, they have them in DTR. Yeah, no, no, they have some Pro Bowls. DTR. Damn, he might get cut. They have Pro Bowls. I never forget that. I never forget. Whoa, I was right. Injuries. You were actually going to start. No, actually, PJ started before him. You were wrong. You're but wrong. did he start? Because PJ was garbage. Okay. But you said okay. he was going to take Why Deshaun's spot. Why is he not giving spot. you credit for that? Because no, he said he's going to take Deshaun's spot, which was just If he not was halfway fact. decent, he would have. Unfortunately, he wasn't even halfway decent. <laughs> Shout out to DTR. He wasn't good, man. Uh, you can use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100 when you use our code. And to help out the podcast, use our code PAS. Link is in our bio. Fellas, can we normalize? I, I don't know how... Older people gonna feel about this. Okay. We're kind of in the middle between where who watches us, our audience. Uh we're all like around the 25, 26 age. I'm 24, by to turn 25 soon. The younger audience might understand this better than the older one. Why did you need to say that? You're gonna say something about Kaisen out again? No, no, I'm not gonna say something about Kaisen. Why'd you <laughs> why'd you need to say uh you were so much younger than us? Well, all he said was a year. I didn't say I was so much younger. You could just kept it like we're 25, 26. You didn't have to be. I oh, said I'm, I'm trying no because I would be lying because that's not my age yeah, right bro. now. That's what I said. Twenty five. Um, I want to ask y'all this question: Why can't we normalize rooting for a ton of teams? I feel like as a newer, newer generation of era of sports, <laughs> this guy's been doing it his whole life. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I think <laughs> most people. I, I would be shocked if fifty percent of sports fans didn't root for a couple of teams. They got their main one, but then you got a couple of teams after that I think that that's you root fine. for two. I think that's Let's fine. I like having my main team, and then I usually have players that I follow around. I usually don't love like a specific team. It's Lamar, it's Jalen Hurts, but the Jets are always my. But team. as long as they're on that team, you're rooting for correct, that team. Correct. I, I don't think that's true. I don't. I think NFL is so much more different than the NBA. Like rivalries are legit a real thing in the NFL. It's just so many players in the NFL. It's hard to just not naturally like i love jettas but like i don't say yeah, i root yeah, for yeah. the vikings every week i, I don't but you love hurts and you root for the eagles yes that's I what it is like, I, like anything i root for jettas to have 200 yards every week Same with the Ravens. i don't care if they win or lose mm-hmm. I, I, I legit don't like i don't care if they win or lose but, but for the bears you were rooting for them to win for justin fields yes yes the reason why is, quarterback yes. is different is because quarterback has so much impact on yeah. winning that's why you want to root for them to win because it's it's almost never let me not say almost never very rarely does a quarterback play absolutely 10 out of 10 perfect and they lose the game. It's like, if, like maybe uh, Josh Allen's the one. He's the guy that immediately came to mind. If you if you're talking about a receiver, I'm not like, oh, but Justin Jefferson is not winning like Tyreek Hill. Yeah, no. You know, you don't say that. And I'm, I'm not even saying what I just said was a fact because I think, you know, Jefferson might beat Tyreek Hill and wins the last two seasons because, you know, Vikings won thirteen 13 games that one year. I think we caught up it'd this be, year, though. It'd be close, yeah. Yeah, it'd be really close. Yeah. You don't say that for running backs, wide receivers, nah. any skill position. But for the quarterback position, if a quarterback 
doesn't have wins, accolades, playoff wins, it matters. I mean, Don't forget about Tyreek's time in Kansas City, Josh too, Allen. when you loved him. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I love Tyreek Hill. Oh, I'm sure. He's not. He's in my division now, though, so, he is. you know, I want him to get locked up for sure. Oh, Every time that he plays the Jets. Because mm. Sauce Gardner's like that, and you said Pastor Tan was better. Look at the numbers this past season. Sauce is better. <laughs> he is. Never know. Uh, it was. Mm. It wasn't so that. So why are you asking this? Because you want to be fans of more teams? No, I'm asking this because I, I feel collection? like right now, before we get into the show, I do have a Viking shirt. I got it at a thrift shop. I, I really ridiculous. like it. There's nothing wrong with having a few just bare shirts around. I have a Philadelphia shirt Jets on. topic today. I thought you would put I'm, on I'm Jets somebody shirt. that I buy shirts if they look good. Okay. I'm not really somebody that's The guy who gets the most slack. You are always rocking Broncos gear, I must say. You're probably the most loyal guy to your team at this table. Whoa. He's that definitely in contention. You're second. I'm second? Yeah. Why is he over me? Just because I see him wear the more gear more. That's really oh, all. That's it, it's just the that gear. That's all it is. You know. And my team is the laughing stock of the league right now. I, with Jets. I get it. With you, that was, <laughs> honestly, it's for you, it's a mood thing. Like, I don't see you as devastated as he is when the Broncos are like playing like shit. You're oh. just like, ah, the Jets Well, I mean, suck. to be fair, we, we, we had never really had Exactly. Yeah. We've, yeah, outside yeah. of this past year, with Zach Wilson, was always like, Fingers crossed, hope for the best, but I was never expecting yeah, like, that's, that's playoff true. wins. I've just you know? seen it more from him, you know, so yeah. I'll put it. We just first. talking about NFL? Yeah, I, I think NBA, you can have as many teams as you just want. I don't care. What oh, is, you what, better what fucking is, pray that's the case. What is classified college. as ruined for your team? Like in NFL? Yes. Is it ruined for them to win? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because Drew was coming here week three saying tank for Caleb. That well, also was for the better of my team. Like when the Jets almost got Trevor Lawrence, I was ruining us for lo- when they that's got that. That's my question. Henry, Henry Ruggs right touchdown, there. I was screaming like I was a diehard Raiders fan. You want the best for your team. Yes. That's the definition of being a diehard fan. You want what is the best for whatever team you root for. And sometimes it's losing. And some it people is. can't understand that. I'm not sure why. But if my team is dog shit, I want the number one overall pick, not win five games instead of two, and now I got the six pick. Dude. Don't mention that to Steelers fans. They're going to get mad at you. Yes, correct. But that's Nine and eight like every year. But I'm saying this is our time dedicated to planting our flags on the teams that we're rocking with. Next How many? Year. So would you, you have 15 that's right my now. Team, we're doing team, it already. Yeah, first of all, Fuck. calm down. Do you have an early idea? I do. I have. I mean, my, three of my teams are going to be the same every year: the Jets, Eagles, and Ravens. That's, I think it's every year. Here, but the thing is, it's going to get a little messy because the answer <laughs> one of them is most definitely going to be the Lions, and the other is most definitely going to be Chicago. Crazy. I'm, I keep that's it, why I, I say it's going to be messy. I think so he, it, he's becoming a Chicago guy this year. Are you removing the Browns from yours? Because that was your team. No, last I, yeah, year. I think I legit only have four. Like I think it would be the Eagles, it'd be the Bills, Texans, and then Chicago. I also need to see what happens post draft because obviously that can really change my opinion on things. But early, early, Broncos number one, no one comes close. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm lying because my brother in Christ too, a tongue of I love him to death. And then the Bears and the Lions, but Lions over the. Bears. I want to. I want to be Bears very known. I, I'm not a Niners fan. I am not a Niners. No, I, I'm going to distinguish it. Now. You have to. I am not a Niners fan. So that's your biggest rival. I just right love you Brock have, Purdy. You have yeah, to. I cannot root for the Niners to win. I can't. No. No. But love Brock Purdy. Hope so he does good. My team is right now. Um, How many have 12? Some, some are following over from last year. So sometimes it's like kind of a situation with me that, you know, I'm just opening the door for more. I'm like a country with open borders. Mm-hmm. Everybody's coming. I'll in. throw the Colts <laughs> in there too, actually, for AR. The New York Jets, like number one, the black no doubt. Where's K1? Cardinals I fuck with Kyler, but... <sighs> Yo, Arizona could be on that list post-draft. You fell off, man. Why? If they draft Marvin Harrison Jr.? So Marvin Harrison Jr. said just Arizona, that's their Well, team. I think also for the fact of... I need to see what they do in the second and third to see if they address more on the defense because right now that was their priority yeah. in the free agency. Let's, get, let's clean up the defense, and I think they did a decent job of that. Uh, but if they get Marvin, it's up. What if he goes to the Chargers? I'm devastated and gutted. Because <laughs> Harbaugh, that's your boy. Herbert's your boy. Oh, but it's the but Chargers. It's the Chargers so. Marvin Harrison's your boy. No, no uh, he won't be a fan. Har- Harbaugh uh, stabbed me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave you a championship. He did. Love that's him. your yeah, boy. Come on. Love him. I'll always love him. But it sucks that he's a Charger. You in the back. So the Broncos got eliminated from the playoffs and the Chargers made the playoffs. Is that a team that you're like, you know, I, I I'm not that. I'm not ruined for them to win, but I don't want them to lose. No, like no, 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 I don't care if they win or lose. No, I want to see them lose mostly. Uh, but in terms of Broncos are out, I'm not rooting for a team in my division. I feel that. So my team, the New York Jets, is number one. Really? I'm just going to, to all the teams in the in the league really bad. <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm looking at a list, so I want to get it correct. Get out, get out the top five yo, power yo, rankings. Let's Here we be, go. Let's be real. Super Bowl matchup. Jets versus Green Bay. This is your chance. No, Jets. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Jets, baby. Come on. If, if the Jets won a Super Bowl, 
New York City's getting shut down. Yeah, I, no, years. for sure. Any New York team right now, honestly. So uh, just itching. Liberty blew it. Man. Except the Nets. New York Jets number one. The Kansas City Chief, Kansas City Chiefs. These this is not going like in order though. But the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Of Top five no, I need rankings. you to put this in order. Top five power rankings. I'm not doing an order. I, right I now. would love to see the order. No, I need an order. AFC South. It, I'm not rooting for any team per se, but I just love what two of those teams in that division got going on. Houston like and the, the Colts. The Texans and the Colts. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Anthony Richardson looks because he could be a superstar in this I league. saw, I think both you guys had AR below Trev. Stroud too, of course. At this point in time, of course. I mean, there's no objective reason to put is AR it, over Is it crazy Trevor to say Lawrence. that AR could be better? I've said that before. Year? I've said it before. It's not crazy I, to say AR, AR could be better AR's than like that, man. What? Anthony Richardson is he could be What's a superstar. That? He could be. It's not he crazy to say that he could He's be better get than CJ Stroud. Respectfully. You gotta yeah, get Hold past on. that. I guy. feel like you know, CJ Stroud, amazing rookie season. He oh he's a spectacular quarterback. Amazing. We're not gonna add like Trevor Lawrence is not a spectacular quarterback. He's really good. He had nine touchdowns drops this past season at one one of the worst offensive lines. His play caller he threw wasn't four good. interceptions in a playoff game. No, he did. He also but threw four touchdowns, touchdowns in the second half. You know, he so never threw Tre- four Trevor Lawrence old narrative. Trevor Lawrence That was against your boys too. Who? Chargers. <laughs> we can't think it's crazy. To, we can't say it's crazy to say that Trevor Lawrence is over CJ Shroud. Like if somebody said that, I wouldn't think that's crazy. I Trevor know, Lawrence I would give a pushback, but I see there's an argument there. He's a super talented. So in the AFC, I got the Jets, the Chiefs, the Bengals. This is just AFC, by the way, guys. In the NFC You said you love the Colts and the Texans. The Packers <laughs> and the Vikings. Seven. Wait, no, 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 no. Packers and I'm, I'm, I'm not rooting for the, oh, okay, okay, okay. for the Colts or the, or the Texans. <laughs> Packers, and, Packers and Vikings. The that's Vikings. That's crazy. That's worse Jeez, than Lions I'll and the Bears. With, <laughs> that's skull. not. Nah, no. It's, it's that's no. the same. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's even. They're both bad. It's not good. They're both bad. Y'all both root for half the division. Yeah, come on, man. And the, the Falcons. I don't feel good about it. I'm being honest. The Falcons the are a team that might go into that territory. I love Baker he Mayfield. He fell off because I'm not of Dave Canales, bro. All that, all his love for Bucks are gone because of. A coach. The Bucks. well, no, it's not that because I was rooting for the Bucks when Brady got there his first year because I was in my Super Bowl pick. So that year I was. Rooting for Brady's crazy. But, yeah, because he was getting the, the washed allegations, and I was like, yo, this guy's not washed. I wish he was. He wasn't, though. He won Super Bowl. He was good literally two years in, in but Tampa with, Bay, like elite years. At the time Brady left the Bucks, you know, I thought they were going to be bad last mm-hmm. year, and they ended up being good. So I'm not going to bandwagon on that team because – you know, even though I like Baker Mayfield, I don't expect anyone, this resurgence from him. I don't think if you're a Bucks fan, anyone's going to call you a bandwagoner. No, no, but I'm just saying I don't feel like I would classify myself as a as a rooter of the Bucks, or that's my team. One of the teams I root for if I called the playoff. So you're in on Minnesota the playoff next appearance season? last year. Not that I'm in on them, but I always got love for Minnesota. He's got the shirt on. I always got love for Minnesota. That's really it's nasty, what it is. though, because you love Green Bay. The Green Bay is your favorite NFC team. Kirk was there for so long, and Kirk is one of my favorite quarterbacks. So Kirk was there for so long that Kirk I said, just, Fuck I love you. Minnesota. So what about Atlanta? That's why I said that's the last team that's You like guys like 18 for, for him? I don't mind it. it Look kind of weird. No, it's six teams. Swap. It's six teams. It's Jets. What? No, it's 18, the, his number. Kirk Cousins, 18. Oh, yeah, I did see it. Number 18. I thought you said 18. No, for no, me. Close, close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're at six, you're at four. I'm at six, yeah. I'm yeah, at three. Three. Four. Yeah, I throw the Colts four. in there. Okay. And the you're Colts, at four. But really, it's three. I mean, okay. Well, these are agendas. No, these I have four teams. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I have Eagles, Bills is a gap for sure. And then, you know, you add the Bears, Texas. Texas are a new one for me. All right, but then you also have to go San Francisco. I'm not a San Francisco fan. Mm, you kind of are, though. No. Let me, let me go y- to you. To have you to be indirectly. I actually do not. I actually want them to fail. He's lying. You're Brock, Brock, I know Brock you. Brock goes out there and stinks it up. That's the L. But Josh Allen was amazing. They lost. It, life can happen. Well, I, I think uh, the difference is that the 49ers, the, the times they lose is usually because of the quarterback. They're not going to have him play at a high level and lose games. Correct. They're too talented. And Josh Allen is consensus second best quarterback in the league. The no point of it is the, the, like the quarterback can play great and he still lose the game. But Josh Allen has to do so much more. I'm not a Niners fan, but you're not going to even win games. It's just not happening. I'm not saying you're not a you're, fan, but okay. You, you have to kind of root for them to win. Not necessarily. You do. R- Riff said the uh-huh. Eagles. He wouldn't be, if they were losing games, he would not be the starting quarterback. It's like for Miami, True. bro. So I, don't say, the I don't want to say I root for them to lose, but I'm not sitting here saying, go Niners. No, nah, I'm just like. Uh, so the Cardinals, not there. No, no. I, I love K1, but they're so not. They're I not troll there. a lot with them. Okay. I'm going to troll again with them again. The Bears. I said Bears, yes. You said the Bears. So right now we got the Eagles, Texans, and the Bears. Oof. 
That's three. Eagles, the Bills. Don't. My bad. Yeah, the don't. Bills. So that's four. That's four. Don't forget my dogs. He's back my in bad. Chicago, man. I, I'm Real not doing this in order. I'm just naming teams. You're in Detroit and Chicago. You actually should be banned from the division. Why is that, though? <laughs> I saw the vision early. Who? With who? With the Bears. He was there with Chicago, but it was always Justin Fields. He's but then they a, added DJ. No, 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 I, I got, I got two more questions, He's though. He's such a liar. The Steelers. How? He was there early. Huh? Are you going for the Steelers? No, no. Justin no. Fields is there, though. She, yeah. I'm going to tweet it out. Steeler Nation. You literally yeah, said Steeler Nation. Sure. 100%. Could we, could we get an uh, NFL tweet one day? With, uh, what? Oh, oh, you, want, you, want a, you want a funny NFL one? Yeah. I got you. But no, I'm not a Steelers fan. What about the Brands, Browns this year? No. That was just an agenda. So it's just four this year. You got the rate. You got the Eagles. The Bills. The Bills. This in March. It's crazy. The Cardinals. No, no, no. Eagles, Bills, He's Bears, to get him. Texans. Just, Texans. <laughs> yeah, he can't Bears. get Bears. Yeah, those okay. are my four. Just to clarify, you rooted for the Bears because of Justin Fields. Now and, that he's less Pittsburgh. And Justin Fields and DJ Moore. Don't ever forget that. I feel like one guy See, was but now it's a cop out now. Total, Why are you a Bears point? guy next season? Because it's strictly like, DJ it's, it's Moore. Not, it's not no, fair no, no, that no, he's no. going to get gifted Caleb Williams. Wait, wait, wait. This, oh, is, not this oh, is not fair. Wait, this wait. is not fair. <laughs> See, that's why when you're me, you see the vision on oh, Chicago. God. Now you no, get to No, this is why rewards. it's important to have these conversations. Agreed. We got to veto and put uh, our fist down. Are you vetoing him for a Bears fan? Are you going to veto him being... Justin Fields is his guy, and now that he's But he rocks with DJ Moore. He rocks with Jalen Johnson. But he's not rocking with the Steelers. If you rock with the Steelers, I'll give you it. Yo, brother, I'm man. You. <laughs> I'm with you out here, man. First of all, first of all. You got to get to no, that five. Because first of all, I've been asked this question multiple times on this podcast. If Justin Fields leave, Rip, are you still going to root for Chicago? And I've said multiple times, yes, I like what they're doing. But you I were rooting that. for them when they yeah, lost hurt. him for injury. Yeah. No, you I did not. The but, then we, but then you asked me after that. I was like, are you going to still root but for Chicago? But you know who was, was like, locked yeah. in? You know who was locked in? You were. Me. He was the Vikings with Jettas, no. You're not rooting for them? No. Okay. For Jets. So you like DJ more than Jettas? What? Do you like DJ I was a more fan than of the Jettas? Chicago I'm before asking I'm, you a question. Do I, no, I don't. Because like if you DJ. do like Jettas more, you should. Probably I like what Chicago is. The is over there. Bro, it's not making sense. It's not making sense. I've been with lie. Chicago since Fields got there. You have a chance to be on the Vikings, and they drafted a quarterback. No, nah, I'm good. I was just root for Jettas. I'm with Chicago. I'm not gonna pick multiple. Why are the Browns out? Because it was only an agenda. It's it, only one it, year thing. It, it was never, uh, it was like a one and a half year thing. It was never like, I'm a fan. That was an agenda. Like I said, I wanted to stamp myself in the NFL world. I did that. Also, I won. it is a little messy that one of your Lost favorite play players play. in the league is a Dallas Cowboy. C.D. Lamb? Yes. Do you ever, ever, ever hear me say, I'm rooting Go for Cowboys? Dallas. Never. It's never happened. But you love C.D. Lamb. I love C.D. to death. And this is why rivalry is important. This is why you're the whore of the group, and I am not that. <laughs> How am I the whore? sitting there, Detroit Lions, Chicago. I can't do that. Do you I see can't. me out here rooting for Kansas City? He's doing City? the same thing, by the way. Well, he's, he's, he's what insane. Do you mean? He's, Minnesota he's, and Green Bay. That's crazy. I, no, no. I, I can't. Just, the I Jordan can't, love. I can't. That Hit Jordan like Love, crack. you're locked in. You were. Lo I'm giving but you that thousand percent. But listen, I, this is my plea. Minnesota. Huh? I've, built, I've built up a brotherhood with Vikings fans. You just don't lead a skull like that. You just don't lead a skull like that. And now they got a chance to get a franchise quarterback. And you're locked back listen, in. I, I'm. 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 Look. I'm keeping an eye out for them. For the Packers, you know, Jordan Love was just, you know, that hit like crack. That I, I got. Where am I gonna go? I can't, es I can't escape my history. But before you said it's because you were a Kirk Cousins fan. And now you're saying it's because they're going to get a quarterback. Do you like anybody else in Minnesota? But yeah, we're talking about me. And he here. was just shit talking Kevin O'Connell before the show. I wasn't he was. Shit <laughs> you were. Actually, Drew asked a if question. If getting vetoes, right. it's his oh, Minnesota shit. I'll be honest. Drew, Drew asked me the question. He asked hate me. Kevin O'Connell. Who's better, Kevin no, O'Connell no, or Dan Campbell? No, no, ask the full question. I asked, is Kevin O'Connell underrated or... Or perfectly rated. And I said it depends on where you have him. And you told me he's underrated because I said Listen, Dan Campbell man. and D'Amico Ryans are better. That's why That's why you told me that yeah, D'Amico I Ryan's, disrespected Kevin O'Connell just now. <sighs> D'Amico Ryan's a, a playoff win. He does. Dels. Dan Campbell's got a lot. That, Dan Campbell's like, I could throw Listen, my hands I, up. The thing with the Vikings is that, you know, they might be the one that I'm holding on to them in the well, but I, I let go of their hand. To, so but they can the die? Timberwolves I, I rock with. You know, so I'm always in Minnesota. Okay. So you always gonna catch me outside. You can keep outside. the wolves. You gonna, gonna catch me outside on the block. So in we're not vetoing Minnesota. I'm still but here. Minnesota. But we're letting him veto Chicago. Like, if you want to veto Minnesota, I don't have any gripe with that. And he don't. just said he, he can't you, leave you the made, skull. You made a valid point. Brothers. Outside of Kirk Cousins, there wasn't a guy that 
was my guy on the team. You, yeah, you don't even like. The I coach. like Justin Jefferson, but I'm not Sam you know, number one Justin Jefferson fan like you are. So Sam you know, Darnold, Sam okay. Darnold. I see he just got my ticket back in. But, so he's back. but hold up, hold up, because he just said he they're going to draft Jack? a quarterback. But in then the also he said that he couldn't fully trust Sam Darnold. So like now it's a little bit tough to. to it's a former Jet. It's a soft spot. Mm. Do they have any other former Jets? Listen, those. Mm. You're the you're Geno the, you're Smith. The, you're the guy with the healthy medium. It's up to you. They're ruling for two Minna, division Minnesota teams. Minnesota seems crazy. Minnesota seems nice. I would t- I would allow the Chicago I appreciate the Minnesota that. for sure. Me, the middle guy is spoken. I hate it has to be you. Are we, allow- crazy. Are we allowing That's De- nuts. Look, sorry, Drew. Are we allowing Detroit and Chicago? What do we mean? We're going to get on one, Drew right now. One, because right. We, we, we gotta, can't, Like, Joel, I, love, I get it. We, uh, we, we, we have, to, we have to get on Drew right now for the teams right. that he rules for. All right. The he Broncos. For, he forgot there's about nothing, Detroit. There's nothing wrong with the Broncos. Okay. That's clash. The Miami Dolphins. There's nothing wrong. We can have that also. We don't care. I know. The Los Angeles Chargers. Why are we doing? What are we? Because you love Justin. He loves Herbert. Herbert. You did love Herbert. You would call him top two in the world. If you're calling this shit about Brock Purdy, he could say the same shit about Justin Herbert. But it's the hypocrisy of it all. He's calling (laughs) me out for hypocrisy. He calling me out for the Brock Purdy stuff. You're rooting for the team. So okay, fine. So you're rooting for the Chargers. Not true. You definitely root harder for Purdy than he does for Herbert. No question. He can't root for. We got two teams so far though. We got the Broncos and then we got the Dolphins. That's fine. The Rams. No argument here. Chuck him up, man. He got the Rams. That's three. The Cardinals with Collar? Nah, that, that's a TBD. Dels, that's a TBD. The Lions beat the Rams in the playoffs. Guess what his next team is going to be? That's all I'm going to say. The Lions, on the notes. you got the Lions. That's your next Locking team. on the notes. That's number that's four. That's all I'm going to tell you. You said the Bears is going to be one of your teams? Got to be. That's number five. <laughs> got to be. <laughs> that was, what York, are we the, doing the, here, bro? No, we're not done. We're not done. The New York Giants. No. Oh. oh okay. What? What? Wow. What, what? So you, that, that, you're done with that? Uh, you're done also, with Daniel Jones? Also a TBD. I need to do a pick six. If they take J.J. McCarthy at pick six... If they take a wide receiver, Joel, we're back. So Joel. that's six. Oh, Joel. but JJ McCarthy's Joel. a Michigan guy. I know, but I, I don't. Joel, I don't he was rooting for the Commanders and the Giants. The Commanders, the Commanders, no. Are you he 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 was, the Cowboys. How Look what he does in right. Look what he does in the right, First off, that that died. That died when Tony Romo was gone. And Ezekiel Elliott. That died. It was Zeke for sure. It was Zeke. Love were you not just recently rooting for the Giants and the Commanders? No, I wasn't rooting for the Commanders. Sam Howell. Oh, Sam, Howell? Sam Howell. Oh, so you were just rooting for Sam Howell. Yeah, Realistically. So once again, we got to make it up here. Similar with you. Like. Similar, similar with you. With, Very clean. Uh, mm, cut and paste. What's a quarterback that you like? But That no, was talking shit. We got the, the commanders, I'm, there is no realistic I'm, chance for them to win games. All right. The commanders, we move no, off of them. Yeah, right now, fuck. we got five teams. Sam we got, Howell's, are you, Seahawks now? This guy's getting no, tossed around I, divisions. I, I will never like Seattle. Right now, we got the Broncos. We got the Dolphins, mm-hmm. we got the Lions, mm-hmm. we got the Bears, mm-hmm. and the Ramley. And we got the Rams. That's number five. The Cardinals with Kyler Murray. Ah, uh, TBD. If, you, if you're fucking with the Rams, I'm sorry. You can't get no, two in two divisions. I'm with you. Fair you enough. Root, you rooted for he's getting, the he's 49ers and the Steelers. Thing. No, uh, 49ers? I, 49ers for mom, absolutely. I'll always root that's for them. Number but six. that's not a squad that okay, I'm going to put in, this, in there. We, we Kyler Murray five. is my dynasty quarterback, though. That's why I have love for him. I'll always have love for K1. That's my dynasty QB. Doesn't really matter here, but okay. I'm just saying. He knows that. Well, you can't have that too. So the Giants, no. depending on who they the draft, the Giants is crazy. Could be number six. Giants is crazy. Uh, well, they were garbage Bells, last Bells were allowing season. that. The Giants are yeah. Well, well, the Giants. A TBD. You could be a fucking Giants fan. I want to be a Giants. Yeah, fan. I know. <sighs> they need some the representation on this. The Mavericks <laughs> going shit on. I'm them. just hoping for the best. I don't have expectations for them. A lot of this is mostly agenda based. Like I don't know if I'll have an agenda fully for the Panthers to take like a playoff leap. The Falcons, I want Bryce to be successful. The Falcons, Saints, or Bucks. Uh, Falcons, maybe I'll have an agenda. Jesus, I think we're all. I think they're gonna be good. Yeah, OD. That's really yeah, what it's gonna be. Also. Oh, no, we don't. Panthers. This so we're at, so we're at five, <laughs> so we're at five teams for Drew. I count right, Giants. Is, is there any that six. you're on my head about realistically? Yes. Chicago is the only little what the little fuck? iffy one. What did we already spoke one. about it yes. though? Just, the, just because you I know the Lions, the Lions are really your team. I'm not going to lie. What do you mean? You, you hopped, hopped on the Bears late. You just gave it you're to been, me. You've been a diehard. Pause. I mentioned Pause. how you <laughs> got there. <laughs> I, I told you how you got there. I was explaining how you got there. That's you what I was explaining. You said the, the Bears guy because, and now I'm suddenly not? Am I the only guy that forgot that he fell off the Lions back in mid-year? You've been such a Lions guy. You're like, they're going to run this division. And then you hopped on Chicago the second half of the year. He went back to Ramley when he he saw they got good. He's That's not facts. real. No. He's not thorough. Oh, he's hopping off the Giants. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's not thorough. Right. He's been here with the damn. Giants now he's hopping off. I'll let him keep yelling. What are we doing? The thing hopping with the Rams the Giants is crazy. They were garbage. They've been garbage. That. The That's Jets not true. They won a playoff Broncos game last year. Uh, That's true, but for multiple, multiple seasons. Uh, last year, they were not good. I'm not a Giants fan. The Giants and it really was, only had one It was good mostly year. agenda-based. Yes, correct. Agenda. I decided that. They've been one of the worst teams in the league. Correct. But they won a playoff game the year that I was on the Giants. 
Uh, that was last year, and I was wrong. You're Daniel f- Jones got hurt. You're a fan. Uh, how? That Daniel Jones shit would not have mattered. I put I put money on Sam you put Howell. Put money on I'm Daniel Jones. I put money on Sam Howell. Listen, you're doing a lot of things with yeah, money that just don't make exactly. sense. Exactly. Sometimes you got to have fun. Um, with the Rams, week one, I said that they would be a playoff team. Week one. So you, if you want to say that that's they got good and I hopped on, you're chatting because mm. we left one. the year before because they, because were, they were not if good. You Ramley, Stafford, Stafford, Dells, if you Ramley, you Ramley, right? Yeah, Stafford was hurt. What were we going to do? You Ramley with Joel, the Bucks. If you Ramley, you Ramley. If you Ramley, you Ramley. When Justin Fields got hurt, you were not fucking with the Bears. And I said, I called, I kept it a hundred up here. I'm like, I'm not a Bears fan right now. I just love Fields. He's up here talking about. He was off, yelling, I'm not a Bears again. fan. I just love Fields. Fields is gone. You're fucking with the Bears. No, and I said I like what they're going. I said I like the direction. This he's guy, not, he's, he, no, you're it's taking both sides. Place. It's one, and also, one or the other, brother. You, you were not there when it was Ramley all 2021. And then you fell off all 2022. Because they were not Stafford was hurt. Good. So, let me get, hurt. So, so let me get this straight. The team ass, you can't, you can't, you can't. If you can't, can't, the, you can't jump in the mud. But when the team I'm nice, you all of a sudden like, I Were you pushing for the Bengals this year when Burrow went out? Well, when Burrow went out, no. But I was always rocking with the Bengals all year. He ain't never said I'm off the Ramley. As, again, what? I am not. I'm sorry, eight. he never, pardon me, he never said I'm off the Bengals just because the quarterback no, but, got hurt. No, but because we knew that yes. no Burrow, no Stafford, you're but, cooks. But what is it? It's agendas. You're going off agendas. What were the Rams that you're like fucking five? They like were, they were like six they had games a top or some shit, pick. bro. Yeah, they were terrible. So Ramley's an agenda. That they gave to the Lions. Yeah, Ramley was always an agenda. So you're not I'm a fan. I'm only a Bronco fan. The rest is agendas, and I'm a two of fan. And I'm a two of fan. Well, that's the rest agenda. is Daniel all Jones. agendas. But that has to be an agenda. It's you're a Stafford all fan. agendas. Again, I am a Stafford fan. He was really. But I was really went up. You know correct. What I'm yeah. Because so you that was the agenda. For the rock. No, not really. If I, if I, I think the Rams are still going to be good. They lost Aaron Donald. That's a huge hit. Was, we were had a debate. You weren't here between Green Bay and, and the Rams. That was also the Rams. Yeah. That was also prior to Aaron If I could put in my two cents in here, I'll say this. I think, you think it makes cool? more sense for Drew to stick Compared with to the Bay, Rams yeah. I agree. than you to stick with the Bears. That's fine. Even though that is... Hey, I, did, I, you I, you had a gripe with him messing with the Giants or nah? Only... Nah, not really. I don't really care if he's the messing Giants with the Giants. The Giants are fine because it's like... Yeah, it's whatever. They, there's no He was all over the division though. That's why he was. It was every other week. He was. He was. All, he, he was. He was Sam Howell. Then the next okay, week, hurts the best. True. Then he was the Giants. He was dead on her. He was. He was. He was on her. He was all over the division at one point. Nah, he which was I wasn't. Forget he was my fantasy quarterback. They really don't fucking. They bugging. don't watch the fantasy reaction. I don't. It's Listen, I don't. I don't pay, pay attention to fantasy. Now he was. You was bugging about Hurts for a couple weeks. When he just when I said what I said, I will stand ten on that. He was a top three quarterback in the fucking league. The comeback win over Buffalo and they won in overtime. We were talking shit. We were talking shit at week. Week eleven of the league, Jalen Hurts. He was having an up and down season. Not really. Yes, he was. He Not was. Really. He was way more up than down. He wasn't as good as twenty twenty two, but no. he was still more up than down. They were fucking. And he was one. playing injured too. <laughs> yeah, there was season. eleven one because they was getting crucial timely stops. It wasn't. He wasn't backpacking. I say we let the I, fans I don't know, bro. Decide, they were man. putting up. He was putting up multi touchdown games every I week. No, against listen, the Vikings, he got them. outplayed by Kirk Cousins. Against me. the Bucks, he Jalen Hurts didn't play well in that game. The Bills game, Jalen Hurts played really well. All right, we're not about to have another Jalen Hurts conversation. No, 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 we don't. No, 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 no. If he if he's keeping Detroit, Chicago, and Ramley, I'm keeping Chicago. So you're at six. You guys do whatever. No, 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 no. I'm still at four. You're at, you're at four. Why do you keep thinking about you're at six? Chicago, it makes sense for me, man. Sorry, you weren't there. You left when the, the time, Eagles, times got tough. The but Texans. The, I left when the time got tough, just like how you left Ramley when the times got tougher. But I but joined in when they now. were tough. I was there week one. I already told you that shit. You weren't there last year when the times they were not tough. good. But you just got you just jumped on me because I did it with the Bears. No, that I jumped make on sense. you because mid season you were like I oh, did it with the Bears, but then you were back on. Rip Which is what you did. The Eagles, Bills, Texans, and the Bears. That's four. Lock me in, man. Drew got five, six, depending on what the Giants do. Seven because his mother. I'm now now Dells, you oh, got here. We go. We're here. Dells I'm now. got the Jets. He got the Ravens. And the Eagles. He yes. got the Eagles. And no, AR, he I said, fuck he's, he's, I fuck he's with the fucking with the Colts. Yes, 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 so yes, that's yes, four. Yes. Welcome to the So really, all of us, south, we have four, four, four to you six. You said you had six. No, no, no. Four no. to six. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to throw himself in there. Everybody <laughs> else got four. Bro, got six. No, but that, the six is borderline because, you know, I rock with Kurt. My fourth is borderline, too. He like, did say that. Right. He did Cole, say that. I, I'm going to fuck with the Colts, but not as much as those We all root for like multiple teams, though. Yeah. That's facts. Plural. Agendas. Just always have to keep that at the forefront. These are our agendas. Because heads would be like, yo, this podcast fuck with so many teams. I don't even know who nah, they like the anymore. The Texans are 100%. I'm a fan. Okay. Yeah. Sorry not to be a fan of CJ's job. No, yeah, I'm there. 
uh, like some other players too, but I'm there. Bills, they know I'm a I fan. I am a Broncos fan. I think Miami are a fan. I mean, Tua yeah. has yeah. made me yeah. such I think a you're supporter. Definitely. The same thing with me and the Bills. Like, we're fans. It of depends. Those teams. I feel like. Uh, like the Chiefs, he's a fan. At I feel this like point. I think he's a Tua fan because regardless of anything that happens that is uh, Tua's fault, he doesn't blame him. So Sancho. he'll blame everybody else. I'm, you, I'm also not got, you also got that. your pops to bring you into the Dolphins. Shout out to Michael. Yeah. He does like Tyreek a lot. I mean, yeah. last year he, he picked the well, Dolphins to win was... every game in a regular season. <laughs> didn't see that one come to this. Tyreek comes to Miami. It's a shock. You're picking a team 16 weeks in a row. You're a fan. He picked well, them nah, 17. I did. I did. And I he's a fan. Nah. That, ain't, that ain't a Tua thing. Tua's like 11, 12. Uh, probably 17 is around one. Did no, you pick it was 17. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, 18. Cook. Well, we just know that he picked them every single week. Yeah, he definitely picked them every time he could. Every time he could, he could. I get that it. Is I like it. I went 11 and Say, I 11 and 7. Ravens every week, I think. Eagles. No, I did pick them in the playoffs. Had a positive record. 11 and 7. No, Eagles, you stopped picking, bro. I definitely didn't pick them in the playoffs. Before that, I don't know. You didn't pick them against Dallas. Respectable. We was on the road. I love that this was an hour of the um, show. I know, there's right. a couple other teams you didn't pick us again. The Niners, I think. Well, now we got that out the way. Now, sure when, now people will understand no, where not on the our road. allegiances home, yeah. lie. Not on the road. I will say I don't like that comment of everyone saying, I don't even know whose teams these guys like. It's like, listen. Nah, you should know. You should know. I think nah, if you watch, if you you watch the show, yeah, you know. I mean, those people mostly have probably just seen it. Instagram uh, and TikTok. I will say also, though, like, I, I don't think it matters who I like, quite frankly. People just think there's some this biases. Is, this, this isn't an individual sports team podcast. This is an every team in the league podcast. So we're getting very, uh, hmm, I guess, a liberal. Like, no, I think, it's, I think it, it helps the fans interact with other things outside of just the numbers. Like you have a little fun we're with it. We're taking a liberal approach at being a fan? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't either. Can you clarify that? I don't want to, personally. I have no idea. I'm lost. You lost Honestly, me. you know, I might grab AZ back. I'll be honest. Did you Did you <laughs> understand what he just said? Crowd, no, I ignored it actually. Um, no, yeah, but that was an understanding. Why would I? Because even though I feel like we definitely have teams that we rock with more than others, because there's players we rock with on those teams more than other teams, I think we do a pretty good job at keeping. I think we need the biases to, out of it. I, I don't know about all that, but I think we need to start showing the uh, fan, start showing the fans how to be loyal. And not switch up and abandon these teams or these agendas. I mean, you got you know? two Jets fans. You got a Broncos fan. The, those teams have not been good for the last basically ten years. You've still had good years. You got your Chiefs, Bengals, Eagles. Okay. There's one that like really matters to me though, and that's the Jets winning. That's all that matters. I don't know. I believe I you ah, to a degree. I don't know. Man. Like seventy-seven. No, I th- I think that. Jets Chiefs play each other. I think he's rooting for the Jets. If you tell me, if I don't you, think no, he, really. Let me ask you a question. I don't know. In the playoffs, let's say it's the AFC Championship game. Mahomes is one game away from that three peat. It's the Jets. Bro. Three straight Super Bowls. Mahomes got three. He's go, good. Oh, really? He he's could die so in the, and he could not be a Hall of Famer. First oh yeah, battle. he would be for sure. It's stealing your thunder with that comment. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't think he'd be upset if they lost that game. Oh no, the I'd Jets, be upset. I don't think so. Yes, I would. I'd be devastated. But, but sweet. I would. I would. I would have rather a healthy Aaron Rodgers season this year than the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. I believe that. Of course. But I, I would think, have but rather you're not seen upset Aaron with the reality play. of what happened. No, because it's nothing that you I can control. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he, he got hurt. Yeah, like if the Ravens game. or Eagles would you know have won the Super Bowl, I've been like, I'm cool with this. Better question. Yeah. Let's say the Chiefs and Green Bay match up in the Super Bowl. Who are you rooting for? <laughs> wow. That is a better question. It is because, you know. The legacy to beat Patrick Mahomes in a Super Bowl. Jordan loves first battle Hall of Famer. It's because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, Patrick Mahomes, he's chasing Tom Brady at this point. It's really him and Tom Brady one and two. But Jordan Love, he got a chance to get his first ring. I will go with the Packers because I like to see parity too. Like, I want to see multiple players in an era win championships because multiple players are deserving. Mm. You know, we know that not everybody's going to win, but. If we had an era of instead of sheer dominance, like instead of Tom Brady winning seven rings, it was if Philip Rivers could have won one in that point. If you saw Mark other, Sanchez, um, I would have loved that. If Mark Sanchez could have won one at that We're point. We're so do, man. Like I would have loved for that to happen because I would have loved for Philip hey, Rivers to get a ring. The year that you guys did beat Tom Brady, that was the year, guys, it's year for parity. If Matt Ryan would have beat Tom Brady instead, and now he got a ring, you know, I would have liked that better because I feel like. When players don't win rings, specifically quarterbacks, they get disrespected. Like Matt Ryan is not looked looked at like he should be looked at if he doesn't if, since he lost. But if he got a championship, 
we'd be respecting the hell out of Matt Ryan's career. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Phillip Rivers. So, you know, I wish those guys would have won for sure. You wish there was parity in the 90s for the NBA? Uh, I didn't grow up on the 90s. I wish there was parity in the 2010s for the NBA. Uh, I'm glad there wasn't. Yeah, I, I wish there was... It wasn't just LeBron in the finals for how many years straight. Like, I wish we got a better East. That's a damn problem. Yeah. Did you not wish that either in the, for the 2010s NBA? I definitely did wish the East was a little better, but I love the West. So, the Derrick West. Rose is in the East. Yeah, he got hurt, though. So, yeah, I, I've never really got to go into a battle with my toughest soldier, you know? Mm. Kind of. That's a shame. Winning there with Nate Robinson. He has such and an shit. easy path to the, to the finals, I'll be honest. Who? LeBron. Uh, uh Yeah. Them, them early East years for yeah. sure. Not early, late. I think early, like 11, 12. I mean, like early 2010s. I was no, say, like 11, 12, nah, 13 was that, tough. That 14, the 15, 16. With the Cavs. Yes, that 14, 15, 16, yeah, 17, are, 18. But those Heat teams, when they had to play like Indiana and stuff. Oh, 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Indiana, matches. though, like they were nice, but you look back at their team now and you're like, that era. They How, played great they team played, basketball. You know, yeah, I was going to say, they, they played just a the toughest. Gritty defensive team. Yeah. George, uh, Paul George averaged like 19 or 21 that year. They had Danny Granger. So, she would have so been so different. Like a healthy Danny Granger. Yep. She would have been cool. Yeah, yeah, they were never healthy because, like you said, that's Danny when Roy Hibbert was, was, was actually a good player. Yeah. David, David West, West, that was towards the end of his tenure. Orlando was still, was still healthy. He was still that's when Dwight was having the back injuries and stuff. Yeah, man. Man, that was an hour of the podcast. It's time to change the title of the podcast entirely now. Here we go. What agendas are we rocking with for the 2024 year? I like that. But uh, on to the actual show. I'm dead. Justin Fields Jesus or Russell Christ. Wilson? <laughs> Who will win the quarterback battle? Well, this is easy. The answer is Russell Wilson. Uh, one of the main reasons why I feel like that's it's going to happen. Does. They've came out and said Russ is the starter. We you think it's easy? It's easy to the point where it they said that they might, they might sign him to a multi-year deal after this season. Yeah, because like they're waiting if he play if he plays good. My point yeah. also another he plays reason, bad, not doing but even even discussing that without yeah, 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 seeing him yeah. play is welcome to <laughs> hey history rewrites itself. Sometimes we saw it with the Broncos. Here we are now with the Steelers. I get it to be honest, but again, why I think mostly why is that sixth round pick can turn into a fourth round pick depending on play time. Fifty one percent of snaps. I think that if you make yeah. the, the smart decision. Don't do that. Keep keep that pick the 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 one that you actually gave away to Chicago, and also. What what's your your ceiling and floor with both of these guys? I guess you could say, right now at least at this point in time, it's about the same. Russ statistically was slightly better in terms of EPA success rate, uh, completion percentage. Russ was definitely far ahead, but completion percentage over expected. These were actually close between the two, but Russ had the edge in almost everything. But again, we're talking about Justin Fields essentially in every stat being a bottom 10 QB. So that's why I just can't look at Justin Fields and, and feel any type of confidence that he is a great passer or a good passer because he's not. So right now, I would just take the, the safety net with Russ. You're paying him a million dollars. I mean, this is as good as it gets for a, a team in a quarterback situation like the Pittsburgh Steelers have with Russ. Everybody announced that Russ is going to be the starter week one. I'm, I'm honestly shocked that there's no sort of quarterback competition. Maybe August comes around and that changes, but the reports we've gotten is, has been all Russ positive that when they first signed him, they said, you are the starter. There's going to be no competition between you and Kenny Pickett. Then they trade for Justin Fields and they still say he's going to be the starter. And then the other report, which Drew mentioned, was that they're already looking forward to the end of the season, potentially sign him to a multi-year extension. Um, first off, I think it's great process by uh, Pittsburgh in terms of what they did this offseason because there wasn't a ton of options for them. You know, realistically, they were probably weren't going to trade up into the top five, top three to get a quarterback. They were never in a Kirk Cousins sweepstakes. And, and outside of that, they're not going to get Baker. There wasn't a ton of options for them. Their best bet was getting Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, I think. You know, I, once they first traded for Russ, it felt like more of a Band-Aid, and I still think that is because you could look at his stats last year, compare it to Patrick Mahomes and, and Lamar Martin, Jackson, Matt. and just look at the raw numbers and be like, well, you know, Pittsburgh did have the arguably worst quarterback situation in the league last year, and now they're going to Russell Wilson, who, who's at least decent. But realistically, if you're going from the 32nd best quarterback, 31st, them or the Jets, whoever, to Russell Wilson, who is <laughs> probably at best like 25th when everyone's healthy, maybe 23rd, I don't know if that's enough of an upgrade to take you from the 9-10 wins expectation first round exit to really anything different. I mean, we saw last season the Saints upgraded with Derek Carr and they missed the playoffs in a really bad division. And this is a tougher division and you're getting Joe Burrow back and you're getting Deshaun Watson back. And of course, the Lamar Jackson, the Ravens were just the number one seed last year. It's going to be really tough for Pittsburgh. 
But I do think getting Justin Fields gives you at least some hope because my expectation is Russ doesn't start the whole year. I think at some point Russ is going to struggle, especially having lack of receivers. They'll probably draft one or sign one, but lack of receivers. And just Arthur Smith, who a lot of his offense is over the middle of the field, and that's not really his game. And the fans are going to be calling for Justin Fields as well. So there's going to be a time where Fields goes on the football field, but I think it's a much better option to have him than a guy like Mason Rudolph, who maybe the seal or the floor is a little bit higher than Fields. He played really well at the end of last season, gone to that playoff game. But there's some hope and optimism with Justin Fields because he has potential and he has the ability to, an outside shot, be kind of a franchise quarterback. The hard decision, though, is they have until May 4th, I want to say, to pick up his options. $25 million for Justin Fields. I'm assuming they'll decline it. So you really only have a 10-game, however many games he plays, sample size to decide, are we going with Russ or are we going with Justin Fields? Who knows, maybe one plays extraordinarily better than the other, and that decision is easy. Um, But right now, I'm not looking at either of these quarterbacks and being like, this is the future of the Steelers for the next three seasons. I feel like this combination of the two is interesting because both quarterbacks have a lot of similarities in terms of how the 2023 season went for them. The Bears went on a win streak from weeks 12 to week 16. They won four of the five games. Their defense in that span, first in EPA per play, they averaged 2.8 turnovers per game. The Broncos had a win streak in a part of a season. They had a five-game win streak. The defense was Movie. seventh in EPA per play, and they averaged 3.2 turnovers per game on a defensive side of the ball. Russ in those weeks was 13th in EPA. Justin Fields in those weeks was 26th in EPA per mm. play. Mm. Both quarterbacks... When their respective teams went on win streaks, were one of the fewest reasons why. 13th in EPA? What the fuck? And that's like <laughs> 26? a bit above average. 13 to 26 is a drastic difference. The difference friend. is that Justin Fields was getting more volume as a rusher. He averaged 266 yards per game in, in the win streak in those weeks. Russell Wilson averaged 202 yards per game. Oh, I know. I, I will say that. Russ completed 71% of his passes, nine touchdowns to two turnovers, 109.5 passer rating. Efficient. It looks great. Yeah. You know, I think with Russ, the numbers lie, but for sure. Oh no, those turnovers were blessing. But for sure, he was much better than Justin Fields. Justin Fields completed 59% of his passes, seven total touchdowns, five total turnovers, 77.6 passer rating when the Bears were winning football games. When they went four and three down the stretch of the season, had he played better... It's not crazy to say that the Bears could have made the playoffs. They had a chance to eliminate the Packers in Week 18, and Justin Fields looked outclassed against Jordan Love. Jordan Love with rookies and seventh-rounder Bo Melton, he was doing damage to that defense, and Justin Fields wasn't able to move the ball down the field consistently. So these two quarterbacks kind of were in similar situations last year when they weren't the biggest reasons why their teams were having success. The Steelers took a flyer on both of them. Some have said they have won the offseason because of it. I disagree. (laughs) I think if you are a playoff team, the next level is to become a contender. And if in an offseason you did not improve enough to become a contender, then you didn't win the offseason. That's why, to me, I think the Russell Wilson move was a very low-risk move. But how much value does it really give you in the grand scheme of things? You're not going up against any of these top teams in the AFC. You're not dethroning them because you're not as good. Justin Fields, he might have some upside as a long-term starter. But as of right now, he's a replacement-level starting quarterback. If you have two quarterbacks, you really have none because no one can play. So you're telling me if Russell Wilson starts the season – and he plays bad, it doesn't matter that the risk was low low risk. The move was low risk because he's not playing well. And if Justin Fields comes in, comes in and plays because Russ wasn't that good and he doesn't show out, how is that really a win? And I know I'm thinking of worst possible scenario. Maybe there is a scenario out there that Russell Wilson turns back to Seattle Russ early years and he's doing great. Yeah, I they was have an elite too, offense. Man. But I just look at the Steelers, and I feel like there are question marks on this team. Arthur Smith in his final season in Atlanta, I felt like a lot of the offense was discombobulated. He didn't use his primary weapons properly. I now have that fear in Pittsburgh. Dell has mentioned that Arthur Smith's system is not even a system fit for Fields and Russ. Another thing Fields and Russ have in common is that 
since 2022, they're number one and two in interceptions, fumbles, and sacks taken since 2022. Fields is at 145. Russ is at 135. Over 30 more than number three, which is Jalen Hurts. He's at number three. In the past two seasons, Russ is number one in EPA loss due to sacks. Fields is number two. Amongst two, amongst every quarterback that qualifies for this stat, since 1980, Fields is the worst quarterback at taking sacks at 12.4%, worse than Zach Wilson. We are talking about two quarterbacks that hold on to the ball for an eternity. They take a lot of sacks. The upside with Russ is that he doesn't turn the ball over like Fields. But the upside with Fields is that he's one of the better athletes in the NFL. And he can bring a dimension to the Steelers' offense that Russ simply can at his age. That's why when I'm talking about who's going to start next year, I kind of feel like Justin Fields might start. Because I think Justin Fields has more potential to generate explosive plays. I think Russell Wilson might limit this offense to the point that he he might not start next year. I, I I think that Justin Fields can beat him in a quarterback battle. I will say I'm glad that you said all that, and it led to Justin Fields being your answer. Uh, but Riv, I'm interested in your opinion, sir. Go ahead. So, uh, You're a Steelers fan. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, man, they embraced me. Got to get you a terrible towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah, I'm good off that, though. I, I, I think this, the Steelers, what they've been doing over the last couple of years in terms of just playing it safe, being that middling pack, in their conference, you know, sneaking in the playoffs. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't consider them – I know they made the playoffs, but I wouldn't consider them a playoff team. You know, I think they can sneak in with a couple wins towards the end. You know, they're gritty. They're always going to play hard. Pittsburgh, they got that dog in them for sure, like that fan base, just the, the culture that they set. But Russell Wilson starting didn't really shock the world. It didn't really shock me because it's just the way – the culture they set up, the way they've respected guys, veteran guys that come into the you know Pittsburgh Steelers organization. In a, they might draft, they might draft a receiver. Pittsburgh usually picks up some good ass receivers. They usually develop some really good ass receivers. So I don't really um, have a worry in that department. But for the like you mentioned, Fields is just a more explosive player. It's just what he is. You know, he can break off forty yard run. Sometimes he can give you those forty yard throws. Russell's the safer. He can kind of dink and dunk, keep it uh, keep it close, be the game manager type quarterback. I think that's what Pittsburgh's been looking for, that game manager. And Russ can just give you that at this point. I like the move, though. I think Fields, you know, taking that, maybe taking a year off just to study the game, maybe to get better. I think that's. I don't think that's a bad issue. You know, I think his first three years, you chalk it up to a failure. And now you can go back to the drawing board. You can study. You always have the potential factor because you can break off 40-yard runs and throw 50-yard bombs. So that's always going to be there. It's just about being in the right situation. And because not many teams, you know, had that, you know, Atlanta went to get Kirk respectable. You know, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You know, a lot of young quarterbacks coming in, CJ, AR, they got their teams locked in, Trevor. And then Tennessee wanted to take a flyer on Will Levis. So, like, it wasn't many. And I don't think Denver's going – they wasn't going to go get fields. So there wasn't many options for him. You know, I felt like he was going to be in Pittsburgh regardless. Now it's about seeing how much can he grow as a player, how much can he, like, learn from Mike Tomlin, and even learn from Russ because if Russ is going to be the starter, I mean, Fields is going to have hands-on, you know, knowledge about the game from a quarterback that we all think is probably going to be a Hall of Famer, you know, if not close to it. So I'm cool with it. We've seen in history quarterbacks traded for the value that we saw Justin Fields traded for, and what were they? They were a backup quarterback. For sure. We just saw Mac Jones traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars for the exact same pick. And we know what he's going to be, the backup quarterback. I don't see a world where... <laughs> uh, maybe I'm being rude to Justin. Maybe I am. Uh, I generally don't think he, he's that good as, as a quarterback in this league. I don't he think he is either. He has, I'm not saying he is. At this point in time. Yeah, I'm saying right now. Yeah. Because <laughs> we can't, Russ. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I mean, Justin Fields, he not even getting his career off the ground. Brother, Russ man, at we, least we got. Just, I mean, no, talking nobody's about talking today, about. Bro. No one's comparing no. Fields don't, to don't Seattle. Russ. Russ. No, it's he, clear as day we're talking about. No, he literally now. usually is. So it, it is interesting to hear, especially after he just said Justin Fields will start. Um, but Justin Fields has an elite trait that not many people, not many quarterbacks have in this league. Only Lamar Jackson. The issue is K one brother at the most important. Part of it all, at being the quarterback, that is not a trait that he has that is good, great, or elite. He is not a good passer right now. And 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 the hope was that by now he would progress in that regard. He simply has. And Joel, you went on this laundry list of stats, and not one of them sounded good in they terms were. of defending 
either of these guys, the reason why it makes more sense to go with Russ is the long-term idea of it. You keep that sixth round, the sixth round, the fourth round to, to sixth round, where it may not be a drastic difference. A, a fourth round pick, we've seen some players that are that are useful in that round. Of course, you have to be good at what you do, but that's that's just a reality. A sixth rounder to a fourth rounder, that's a difference. Uh, and on top of it, one point one million allocated to Russell Wilson, who may not fit the scheme. I agree, that is a genuine concern. If you're a Steelers fan, get out of this reality that the, winning the division is possible. Uh, the Bengals, if they're healthy, yeah, get the Ravens. The tank. No, most they got definitely them to be exactly what they've to, been. Mm-hmm. No, he. The thing is, the the Pittsburgh Steelers truthers are trying to convince themselves. Listen, we may not like Russ, but there's now hope that Justin Fields can be this this last hope for us. That he, that we can now revitalize his career. We can really get him this jump start. H- how is that just going to happen? Realistically, you got to have a dude, especially if you're in the end of AFC. Like it, it sounds silly and like very, like making it very simple, but if you don't have a dude at quarterback, it's going to be really hard to win. For a stack team, I do think they're going to be more efficient this season in terms of of offense because they should. They had Matt Canada for a majority of the season Correct. last year, and Kenny Pickett. I do think it is an upgrade. They were we're looking at 23rd in terms of uh, excuse me, 25th in drop back pre drop back EPA, 23rd overall in EPA per play. I think they'll be better than that. I think they could flirt with being middle of the pack, maybe somewhere from that, you know, 15 on the high end, 20 to the low end, something around that where the offense is going to have some moments. But overall, especially if this weapons room is looking like George Pickens and maybe just a rookie, a rookie wide receiver, I don't have a ton of faith there. But it's very difficult for me that before they made these moves and after they make these moves, I look at the Pittsburgh Steelers the exact same way. The Steelers all of a sudden do not become the division favorite. I do not think they're going to win a playoff game. I still look at them as probably on paper the 10th best team in the AFC. But since they have Mike Tomlin, who is one of the best coaches in the NFL, he's shown year after year. He deserves that respect too. When we do our when we do our prediction at the end of the year, they'll probably be around nine wins. If they had an average coach, you're probably talking about a six or seven win team. Cook. I feel like the fan, the, the cycle of fan bases goes like this. Russell Wilson was on a decline coming from Seattle to Denver. It wasn't as apparent as it was in Denver, though. The fans got excited for that. It makes sense. Denver fans saw firsthand how the stats can lie to you with Russ. Steelers fans that probably hadn't watched the Broncos all year long, as soon as they get Russ, they're trying to shove these stats in your face and say, this guy's playing at a top 10 level and we only paying him a minimum. But there's a reason why he wasn't sought after like Kirk Cousins. It's a reason why. I know the numbers for Fields looks worse, but I also have to be fair. And I have to say that one is, one's OC is Luke Getze and one's OC oh, is Sean Payne. I've always been fair to Justin Fields. It's just that everybody else is not fair to the situation around him. And the situation always gets blamed. But I just told you the numbers from weeks 12 to 17 that they were winning football games and he wasn't even that good. Fields had a couple good games, though. The Falcons game was good. Uh, against the Browns, they lost because the Browns made a comeback, but yeah. also Fields had three and outs the, in that game. The Lions game. game, he was good. The one they lost. Yeah, I no, think he, he was had, good early on and threw. Just did not settle to the plate. I don't know if he threw. They, they did. They were a big that game. They, they, I think with like four minutes that left, they Detroit. blew a yes. two touchdown game. Yeah, that was in Detroit. That just doesn't happen if uh, if your quarterback seals a deal on games. That's not going to happen. And I say that I as guess. Tua, I who he also played well. had was one of a recipient of that yeah, that same. No, I, last I thought season. he played well that game though, for the most part. So for me, I just think that there's been too much of a cult like following with Fields right. that anything that he doesn't do at a good level is because of the offensive line. It's because of the weapons. It's because of the running game. It's because of all these different things. Last year, Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert both averaged over four yards per carry. The offensive line, according to ESPN, was top 10 in pass block and run block win rate. It was 19th according to PFF just amongst offensive line groupings, which tells me that it's not a great offensive line, but you can succeed behind it. And a, a damning stat is the fact that uh, Justin Fields pressure to sack ratio, which is how many pressures turn into sacks for a quarterback. It determines quarterback's pocket presence. That that's what that's what the stat does. Justin Fields was at 19.5% in 
Tyson Badgett, when he played four games he started, it was at 9.5%. So Tyson Badgett was much, much better at handling pressure behind the same offensive line as Justin Fields. Not saying that Badgett is better, but it's just that is a flow on Fields game that he holds on to the ball. He takes a ton of sacks. And when, when it comes to negative plays, we often only talk about interceptions and fumbles. Sacks are just as much of a negative play. I mean, if you throw an interception, Josh Allen throwing an interception on third and 20, that's an arm punt essentially. But people take it as it it's worth more than taking a sack on third and four in field goal range. You know, because I think taking a sack on third and four in field goal range is worse than throwing an interception as an arm punt. But that's not measured the same. I feel like Joe Burrow said the same thing you said in one interview, and I want to know if you got it from me. <laughs> Joe Burrow has said that. That's not where I got it from. Okay, okay. But Joe Burrow's point is that you take sacks on third downs because you're trying to make a play. Yeah. If you're not in field goal range and you don't have a chance to get like you don't have a chance to kick the ball from where you're at, it's better to take a sack on third down and extend the play because it's a punt regardless. I don't know. That's tough though, because then what if you fumble? Then that decision backfires, you know. What yeah. if you, you know strip sack like all that? I don't know. So like, I wouldn't say it all the way like sack. Like unless you're just like it's like a safe sack where you get it, you see they're coming, you brace for it. But some of those extensions be you got you got the ball holding in one arm or like you run and somebody just comes behind you, boom! Now it's a fumble. I will say my least favorite thing about both of these quarterbacks is how long they do hold on to the ball. They're trying to play hero ball constantly as yeah. opposed to just seeing the first read that's wide open. That's been a big knock on Russ that we've had to be very critical of where he's trying to escape out, and that's why he's not seeing the middle of the field for whatever reason because he likes to extend, roll out to that to that right side, and try to make plays happen like that. With Justin Fields, how many times last season did we see players run open middle of the field and he's still just holding on to that ball, holding on to that ball, and then he tries to escape because of obvious the amazing athleticism that he has, but then it does lead to sacks more often than not. It's just not a it's not a situation that I should... Uh, if, if you're a Steelers fan, I can understand being optimistic because there is talent on the team, but being being over dramatically unrealistic about your team that's really just not how the that's not the approach that I would take before we move on do we want to just quickly go through the AFC teams and see where the Steelers would rank I'm yes. not against that at all yeah let's do it let me pull up the standards so you didn't have it up huh I'm sick of guys asking questions and not having the information I'm, I'm ready phone out yeah, my, my laptop's dead actually I would love the charger oh, um, <laughs> so do you think these teams are better than the Steelers Buffalo Bills absolutely yes. Miami Dolphins definitely yes. New York Jets Yes. 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 If they're healthy. New England, no. No. Baltimore Ravens. Yes. yes. Cleveland Browns. Yes. I think that might be a toss up. The Who? Browns are more talented, Who? but it's dependent on what they get out of Deshaun it's Watson. It's solely dependent on Deshaun. Okay. Even on a bad Deshaun year, they were still very comfortably better than the Steelers. And Deshaun was winning. And games. Jameis Winston is better than PJ Walker. I'll they, go to with be the fair, Browns. they were only one game better than Pittsburgh. Really? Last I thought year. they won 10 11. 7, 11, 6. Um, so we're we not counting Cleveland? No, I'm going I'm counting Cleveland. Cleveland. I think that's borderline. I'm okay. not going to count them in mind. Bengals. They are better. Yes. Okay, so we're at six right now. That, that's Defense not borderline either. Still, no. that okay. It's uh, Joe no. Burrow's healthy. I'm sorry. If Joe Burrow's okay. healthy, he's no. So, All right, Joe that, Burrow was hurt and they won yeah, nine games. That's true. That's true. Jake Browning, shout out to him. Shout the out. real quarterback. Houston Texans. Yes. Yes, they're I better. Would go with oh, that's Houston. that's not a toss up either. The Texans. I'm just asking. They just smoked the Browns in the playoffs. I didn't had. No, I just asked the question. But you're asking it because I said it was a toss up with the Browns. Ten games last year. Eleven. And then the Browns got smoked in the playoffs by the Texans. They were on the road. They're not a good road team. Okay. Jacksonville Jaguars. That's a toss up. That's a toss up too. I don't know yet. I would probably lean the Jags. This go is wild, go, close. wild guy moment. Pittsburgh. Okay. I was going to say this is also where I can I can lean Pittsburgh in this one because there's so many unknowns with Jacksonville. After the Jaguars collapsed last season, it is hard to trust them. So you trust the stability with Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh the Colts. If AR's healthy, the Colts are better. That's a toss up. That is a toss-up. Absolutely, up. the Colts are better. It's a toss-up. Absolutely. <laughs> you <You're> really <laughs> hit the Jags, like Anthony then. Richardson, healthy? But Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence doesn't get nine drop touchdowns? <laughs> I know, I know. That's close, too. It's Shane Steichen, baby. Nah, close, I'm but I'm going to go... The Colts beat the Steelers by... by they, they beat them by 27 points. That was Mason Rudolph, to be fair. Cool. Head to head. Mason Rudolph, Rudolph was their best quarterback last he year. Cooked. He did cook. So why, why are the Colts getting... No, it was with Trubisky. All right, I, oh, I apologize. Nice. It are, makes sense. Why are the Colts getting absolutely, but the Browns aren't getting absolutely? Yes, I'm, I'm harping on this. That's fair. The quarterback position. Brother, oh, brother man. 
Jameis Winston, I kid you not, if Deshaun isn't good, he is a thousand times better than PJ Walker and DTR combined. I I like I promise. You know, also, you. the Colts did play the Browns last year. Yeah, we know who won. It doesn't matter though for you. Browns did win. But they had Gardner Mitchell, so I don't care about the game. Yeah. That's true. I think that when we talk you guys about PJ Walker, Winston, am I tweaking? <laughs> 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 you see what I'm saying? But I James don't say we Winston, no more. He is <laughs> one of the most volatile quarterbacks. He's so was a, Joe Flacco he's a, towards the end of the year. He's a backup, but he's not a game manager. He will lose you games. Joe Flacco, high key, same way. Joe Flacco was out there slinging that bad he boy. Was. Yo, bro, I don't think you realize how bad PJ Walker was in DTR. No, I realized. Okay, it. so Jacksonville, or excuse me, Colts, yes or no? I'm going to say. Colts. I'll go, yeah. But it's Colts. not. It's, it's a toss. I'm giving the Colts. Okay, and you said definitely. So we're at eight teams right now. <laughs> the Chiefs, nine. Yes. Raiders, Broncos, Chargers. The Chargers have a chance, but right now that's not a certain yes. They got to prove that. that team looks world. like. I'm, I think the Steelers are better than all three. I'm going to go that the Steelers are better than all three. I'm also. with you. So that would have them as the 10th tenth. Tenth best team coached. in the AFC. There you go, Dells. And again, Mike Tomlin deserves his respect. He's a legend. He so they're not going to the finish in 10th place. They'll probably be the seven seed, nine and eight again. But it's just uh, the reality of their team is you got better at quarterback, but probably not enough. That's what the Steelers are, though. They're a team that they will be in the hunt come playoff time, and they can maybe get that seven seed spot. But right now in the NFL, they are the Brooklyn Nets of what the Brooklyn Nets are in the NBA. Respect the Steelers. Chicago Bulls. Well, I mean the Chicago Bulls. The Pittsburgh makes there playoffs. we go. Because we're fair. Oh, Let me ask right. you a question. So, because, you, Dell, you mentioned it. They need to get a dude. They haven't been in a position to get a dude. And let's be realistic. Some of these drafts, drafts like the Trevor Lawrence one, have popped out bad dudes, right? Mm -hmm. So, is it Mike Tomlin's fault that he can just have these guys playing winning football with mediocre talent? Like, how do you... No, it's not his fault. But how do you fully go into a rebuild when you, this team just can't be as bad as you want them to be? I mean, I feel like they've had really good defenses on top of having good offensive personnel that is just good enough to manage And most of them, I'm, I'm assuming, because I don't know if to tell them, them to drafting outside of Minka, like they drafted T.J. Watt. Deontay was drafted. Alex Smith, George Heisman, Their first drafted. round picks were pretty terrible for a yep. stretch. For a they drafted Najee Harris. They drafted Tremaine well, Edmonds. T.J. was a first rounder. Yeah, they Last pick in the, in the round, of the first round. From Alex Smith, they drafted, they drafted Devin him. Bush. I'm pretty he wasn't yeah. a first rounder. Yeah. So I'm just saying draft in general. Honestly, like, the receivers players. recently have been kind of 50-50 because they had Chase Claypool. They've had James Washington. Chase was, they've had no, uh, Chase had Calvin Austin. Chase had that year, man. Yeah, one year. Now he's basically out of the league. Fucking um, started talking crazy. But One I of think, the greatest nicknames of all time. I think they trash. have to get aggressive in a trade because I'm with you. I don't think they'll ever be bad enough unless real injuries just kills them yeah. one year. But I think they have to get aggressive. Like when the when a Matt Stafford becomes available and Aaron Rodgers, like Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Cousins in free agency, they they seem to have a tendency to hold on to guys too long. Big Ben, I think, was on the team probably a year too long. I mean, going into last year with Kenny Pickett being the Un, like the yep. number one quarterback, so, no question about so what it. Do you it was a little decide questionable. Decide to move TJ Watt. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if I would. Have I don't think they're even there yet. And relax, Pittsburgh. I know you're gonna <laughs> do what y'all do, but you're talking about rebuilding. Like that year when TJ got hurt, they were losing those games. Then he came back, and they just like yeah. Well, that's on why I don't know if they're ever gonna be bad enough to be a top oh, guy. No, he's one and once. I love TJ. With the NFL, I don't even think it's about rebuilding because you know a team like the Minnesota Vikings, mm -hmm. they didn't rebuild. You know, they're kind of in a competitive rebuild. And they're acquiring assets they to move up in the draft. I think the problem with the Steelers is that they have not invested enough into the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. They overdrafted Kenny Pickett, and he ended up bad. But also, you didn't – I wasn't a fan of Kenny Pickett, but you didn't put him in a position to be successful. You had Matt Canada for way too long. That was uh, you didn't have much of a running game. The offensive line wasn't that great. Kenny Pickett has his own flaws, but Mike Tomlin – being attached to a terrible OC that everybody knew was terrible, I think is 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 really why Steelers fans aren't the highest on him. I think you bring up an interesting point because we are, in a way, punishing Mike Tomlin for winning football games. But I also think that there have been instances in the playoffs where the Steelers have been the more talented team under Mike Tomlin, yeah. and they lost. You know, the Broncos beat the Steelers. Mm -hmm. uh, the the, Tebow, the Tebow playoff game. Yep. The Jaguars beat the Steelers. You know, they weren't the more... I don't know if they were the more talented team. The Steelers, I think Mike Tomlin's playoff wins have all come up... Have all come against Mid backup quarterbacks, quarterbacks yeah. or back quarterbacks. I think the best one he's beat is like Alex. Was Mack. that Jacksonville game? Wait, not whoa, in Jacksonville. We're talking all-time? Hmm? No, since the Super Bowl win. 
Oh, yes. Okay. I was going to say, Sacks, I was going to say, because that run. Because they beat Mark Sanchez. They beat Matt Moore, mm-hmm. who started in place of Ryan Tannehill when they faced the Dolphins. Um, They'd be they beat Alex Hall Smith, Famer, I believe. Kurt Warner. Yeah, the before that, I'm talking about like post uh, 2009. Let's, let's, let's double check that. I do think it's a step in the right direction for the Steelers that they hired an outside guide offensive coordinator. Regardless of how Arthur Smith pans out, yep. I think the process is good. And same thing with quarterback. You at least took a chance on something different. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's that's the, posi- the positive side you could take away from this if you're a Steelers fan. But the ones out there saying that Justin Fields is going to be a franchise quarterback Please. and division wins and all this, I, I don't see Can it. Can we see it first? Like, I I see, it. see a game. Please. So I mentioned that thing about Justin Fields about the cult like following because you know the, the Bears essentially haven't gift wrapped the generational quarterback prospect and in the draft. The they beat Alex Smith. One. Yeah, that was yes. the best quarterback they've been yes, post. Yes, yes, yes. So Big Ben did not throw a touchdown. Justin <laughs> Fields got traded, and now I think there's a bunch of unfair expectations on Caleb. We should expect him to be great. That's a fact. Yeah. But I see Bears fans saying. If we don't make the playoffs next year, this is a failure, and it's just Caleb's rookie year. You have Deion Sanders coming out saying that he doesn't like Caleb in Chicago because it's cold and because Caleb has been used to good weather. Mm -hmm. I I think Caleb got the arm that he could be fine anywhere. He just has that talented of an arm. But you have a lot of negativity on Caleb Williams. RG3 came out and said he should pull an Eli Manning on the Chicago Bears because of how they did Justin Fields. And I feel like people aren't recognizing that the Bears are a great situation. Really, just RG3 wasn't recognizing in that point. But really, I want to make this about Caleb Williams and just your expectations for him next year Mm -hmm. and the the negativity around him. Because I think it's interesting what's going on with him. Bears fans, there was a majority of them that didn't want to move on from Justin Fields and draft Caleb. They theorized that they were keeping fields and trading the first overall pick. And now a lot of those same negative fans are now trying to put a lot of pressure on him in his first year in the NFL. So, sorry, Drew, before you give your opinion, I just want to throw you the schedule. Okay. Just so you can have a a better understanding. Other opponents, at least. So, are we doing uh, the Bears 2024 NFL schedule prediction? Opponents. They have their opponents. I just want you, before you have it, to have it, uh, Asia, like their schedule, just what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, at home, they will play Detroit. They'll play Green Bay, Minnesota, of course, the divisions. And then they'll play the Rams, Seattle, the Jaguars, the Titans, the Panthers, and the Patriots. Then on the road, they play the obvious three division teams. And then they play Arizona. San Fran, Houston, Colts, Commanders. Damn. Do your thing, brother. That's 50-50. Yeah, that's They tough. got some ones, Commanders, that road, the Panthers. That road schedule is nuts. Oh, dear. The Cardinals, those are some wins they could get. Division's going to be tough, gonna be though. Sneaky. Like, that's going to be six games where yeah. you're probably going to be an underdog in all of them. Um, not Minnesota, actually, probably not. You know, I, I, I have a pretty big problem with this. I say this because what is the comparison of Caleb Williams right now? What is the like overwhelming majority is that you see Caleb Williams and who is he being compared to? Arguably the greatest quarterback to ever touch a football field in Patrick Mahomes. I personally see a little bit more Kyler. He's not as fast as Kyler. That's who I see. Maybe that's because of the height, but I do think they have similar play styles. But a lot of comparisons are to Patrick Mahomes because of his escapability, his big arm, his ability to hit throws all over the field. So, Bears fans, just take that in for a second. If you're having a quarterback compared to one of the greatest we've ever seen, how about you be grateful? Now, number two, uh, I have such a problem with people not keeping the main thing the main thing. And what's the main thing? Being good at football at this current point in time. When you vocalize anything, you open yourself to criticism. That's natural. People will have opinions on us because that's our job, to talk. But a lot of what... Your, your critique of Caleb Williams should be is his play on the football field. So because you, you, you've heard him speak and you feel like he has a little arrogance to him, he has what I see, confidence. We're, we're suddenly looking at him and now questioning whether or not the hype was real because I know for a fact when Trevor Lawrence was the generational prospect, the best prospect we've ever seen, the best prospect since Andrew Luck, there was nobody that had draft fatigue when it came to Trevor Lawrence. Why? Because he was boring? Because he never spoke, really? There was a narrative around Trevor Lawrence that he didn't want to win 
because I think he had an interview with Sports Illustrated that Super Bowls wasn't the most important thing yeah. to him. He said football's not my life, more or less. People were not happy. But people are now talking about Caleb Williams and his nails, talking about Caleb Williams with the dresses, talking about Caleb Williams that he's on the sideline after he just lost his opportunity to compete for the national championship on the sideline with his parents, hugging, hugging his parents and crying. If you've ever cared about something, anything in your life, it should evoke some type of emotion with you. Probably won't experience anything like Caleb has if you're just a normal human being where he's competing for something that is actually going to impact his future. Now, the, the, the emotion that he felt in that situation where he felt like he failed, he showed the emotion like a normal human being would. Oh, so now we're going to shame him for crying to his mom and his pops. If you can't be vulnerable with your parents, who can you be vulnerable with, really? Because you're not keeping the main thing the main thing. On the football field, there is nobody in college football that is on his level. Mm. But because now he's opened his, his, his he's decided to be vocal uh, about qu the questions that they're asking, you're not liking how he's answering them. Now we're starting to question who he is because you don't like his personality. Keep the main thing the main thing. And, and that's really my, my big problem in this because when it comes to just watching him play football, it is there should be no questions about his game. Zero. Caleb Williams is special. Uh, and I think it's a rare combination when you have a team that's picking first overall that has a good situation waiting for you. Almost never and has. that's what Kayla Williams got right now with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, two solid tight ends in Cole Komet and Gerald Deverick. I, like Cole. I think we're going to see a breakout from Darnell Wright, their tackle. For I think sure. he's a future star, and they can have a running game. I didn't like the DeAndre Swift signing. I really don't think DeAndre Swift is good. They should have just rolled out there with Roshan Johnson, Khalil Herbert next year, and maybe draft you know a block and running back to uh, manage those third downs. I wanted to kind of do an exercise because – People throw that around often, right? You know, quarterbacks that are selected first overall, they're often not thrown into good situations. So I went I went back to 2009 quarterbacks drafted in first overall, and I just put down their weapons. So who was a running back? Who led the team in rushing yards? And who were the top two receivers? If there was a good name in there, I might have mentioned a third. So let's look at the situations of former number one overall picks in NFL history because Caleb Williams is going into a great situation. Bryce Young. Chuba Hubbard, Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, Jonathan Mingo. Chuba Hubbard. And it's Chuba oh, Hubbard because oh they God. gave Miles Sanders $26, 28000000 million and had to bench him. Yeah, and Chuba Hubbard was significantly better. What are we grading this situation? It's an F. 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 That's an F. On to the next one. Joe Burrow as a rookie. Joe Mixon played six games but still led the team in rushing. T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and A.J. Green. Wait, are we grading the just the talent or what they actually did? The offensive the talent, talent around them. I'll give that a B. That, that is like a B minus. Uh, if, you, if you're taking account the offensive line too, I mean, it's probably that's close to like a C. C. Plus, I'm fine. With, I'm, uh, I'm going B minus. But yeah, if you're just saying straight weapons, yeah, I think B is fine. Next name up, Kyler Murray had Kenyon Drake, Larry Fitzgerald, and Christian Kirk. Kenyon Drake, D plus. Uh, a C minus. Kenyon Drake was yeah, pretty, years. pretty this solid was, this with was Carolina. Larry at the, you know, it was plus, C minus. Larry, Christian. I, I, I was thinking like a C. Yeah, C C minus. C minus. Next up. Is Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Jarvis Landry, David Njoku. That's a B. Yeah, I'm with you. B. B. That I'll is a B. B. But and we real also can't forget that the year before that they, they what was it? They won zero, zero games. games? Yeah, yeah, I think they might have won zero games. Uh, we have to mention this because it's a real ball nowhere name. Mm -hmm. Antonio Callaway. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was also on his team, made some <laughs> highlight catches for the Browns. <laughs> 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 Antonio Callaway is a ball. Is he more of a ball nowhere name than Auden Tate? <laughs> no, you got to know ball if you know Auden Tate. You got to know ball if you know Auden Tate. He's a legend. Uh, what is it? Uh, Corey Coleman? Yep. First round. One of the best receivers ever. Damn. He has to be traded because he wasn't being thrown to enough. Tragic. Yeah, really. Next name up, Jared Goff, Todd Gurley, Kenny Britt, Brian Quick, and Tavon Austin. B? This, this, uh, yeah, this was. I mean, this going, was. I feel like was this, this Todd was Gurley was Todd nice. Gurley. Like, yeah, no, this was Todd Gurley's rookie year. These, this is the, this these quarterback situations stepping in so into Jared year one. And Todd no, that wasn't year. Todd Gurley's rookie year. Oh no, no, you're right. It was a second it was year. Sec Todd Gurley had less than a thousand yards. Yeah. He was not that good this year. This was when Jared Goff had Jeff Fisher as exactly. speed out there. Fisher year. I'll, yeah. no, I'll change this to like C plus. Yeah, yeah, C B minus. C, C plus. A lot of speed. It's just because like I knew what Gurley becomes, so it's easier to be like he was fucking amazing. Jameis Winston, Doug Martin, who was an all-pro. He was a dog. 
that year. Mike Evans, Dog. Charles Sims, and then rest in peace to the late Vincent Jackson. That's this is like an A. I a. was gonna say that's, that's a a. Nice. B plus A minus. Martin, Vincent cool Jackson, that, yeah. Mike Evans is crazy. I'll be honest, Chicago probably clears all of this. Tampa is, is the closest one. So yeah. so far, Chicago is the best. Yeah. This next quarterback, Andrew Luck, Vic Ballard, Reggie Wayne. T.Y. Hilton, Donnie Avery. Reggie Wayne was a pro bowler, a 1,000-yard receiver. Okay. Was this T.Y.? Uh, Andrew T.Y. Lux was rookie. nice. This was T.Y. T.Y.? This was rookie T.Y. T- yeah, okay. T.Y. Was, was still T-Y. great. I would still give it a B plus. Yeah. That is like a B plus B. Yeah. I don't know that running back you said. Not like taking Ballard? Yeah, I'm sorry. Line. I just... just <laughs> he had 800 yards. Yeah, you year. caught me with that one. Yeah, I'll be Vic honest. Ballard. Yeah, no clue who that is. Cam Newen has some weapons. He had D'Angelo Williams, Jonathan Stewart, Steve Smith Jr., he had Greg Olson and Brandon LaFell. This is that's an A. Yeah, damn. Damn. Near. It's just they didn't really. Uh, cr- yeah, probably that an a rookie minus. year <laughs> can that he got Steve Smith for too. That Steve Smith was still great. Yeah, he was. Last two first overall picks: Sam Bradford, Stephen Jackson, Danny Amendola, Brandon Gibson. That's that, like a D to me. C minus. I understand. This was Stephen Jackson. Still good. He still had a, he had twelve hundred yards that year. I, okay. I yeah. Gonna say, I'm going C. Nice. I'm going Steve Jackson was really good. And then also Danny Amendola was a respectable wide receiver. Mm-hmm. I feel like C's fair though. C's fair. Matthew Stafford had Kevin Smith, Calvin Johnson, and Brian Johnson. It is being having, carried. Having Calvin Johnson is like a minimum yeah. B minus. <laughs> B minus. Oh, period. Dude. Just him. So looking at where all these first overall picks went situation wise, where would you rank Caleb Williams and the Bears? It's up there with it's Carolina. Top two. To me, it's and top two. Them, I, Carolina's fair. I think uh-huh. Tampa Bay with Doug Martin, Mike for Evans, sure. Vincent Jackson. He was hurt. He only played like nine games, but would have been on pace for 1,000 yards. Carolina's fair, too. Two running backs. You've got Greg Olson and Steve Smith. Top three at worst, I would have them. Probably, honestly, first or second. DJ Moore and Keenan Allen is one say, of the it's better being carried receiving by that, duos in the league. For sure. DeAndre Swift's not a... He, he's not... He's not a, Terrible player. And there's a world where they still take a receiver at nine if a dune Zay falls or neighbors, which seems less likely. But for sure. For then sure. You have if they one, take that third wide really, receiver, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, one of the best receiving cores in the NFL. I'm crazy for saying that the Browns give them a run for their money. Nick Chubb, Jarvis, and Njoku. I think that's solid, too. I also think at the time, and Njoku wasn't anything over the top. Mm-hmm. He was a first-round pick. But Chubb was also. Was that Chubb's rookie year also? Yes. Yeah, he started a little bit later. Because someone who got injured, I'm blanking. Oh, man. Because I remember that pretty vividly where a running back got injured. I remember Nick Chubb was like the big pickup that offseason. Yes, Or that that midseason, excuse me. Carlos Hyde. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was Carlos Hyde. Because Carlos Hyde was actually decent for them. And then he got injured. And then, of course, Nick Chubb was, I mean, never looked back. He was a league winner. Oh, for sure. He was. For sure. He was just a free agent. For me, I think Cam Newton and the Panthers, that situation with yep. Steve Smith, the two running backs, Greg Olson, that was better. Jameis Winston, Doug Martin, all pro here, Mike Evans, that gives the Bears a run for their money. I think that Caleb for sure is in the top three position in, in the last like 12, 13 years sure. amongst the first overall pick quarterbacks. For sure, this is a rarity that you see the first overall pick uh, be put in a situation immediately that we legitimately are talking about the Bears as a potential playoff team. So talking about the Bears' potential, Riv, what do you think their record will be? You're the Bears guy. You're still the Bears guy. So uh, That made you feel good right there? <laughs> we don't know their schedule just yet, but just off the teams they're playing, tell me if you think it's a W or an L. I'm assuming you got the you got this list in front of you. Yes, yes. I do have the opponents that they will play at home, will play on the road. So I'm going to start with the home opponents. All right. How do you so, think? They, should we do just like how they do in division, get those six games out? I do think they go three and three. Okay, in the division. I'm cool. You think they, why do we always split? just think splits are happening in the division? Out of respect for the division. Out of respect, division. we do. No, nah, I could see, like, cause it, I could see two and four. I think maybe Green Bay sweeps them. I don't think Detroit will sweep them. I think they'll sneak one, and I think they can split with Minnesota or maybe even win both. You know, it depends on how they get that quarterback yes. situation. You could say four and four and two. I could. You could. I think three and three two out of four, respect. Yeah, three and three out of respect. That's a good division. So at home, they'll get the Rams. I think the Rams get that one. They'll get Seattle. I think they beat Seattle. I think, four they beat, wins. I think they beat Jacksonville. I oh. think they beat the Titans. I think they beat the Panthers. I think Seven. they beat New England. Eight. But Damn, obvi- so they're basically that's eight not, wins. Yeah. But obviously, they're losing a lot of these road They games. could easily lose a trap game, which would yeah. be one of those four games. But so but far, you, you got them at eight wins. Just paper for paper, talent for talent. That's what I think. Because I think they'll get Caleb. So I think that's going to happen. Uh, on the road, obviously, get those three out the way. I think they beat Arizona. I think that I lied. 
alive. No. I understand where you're coming from, though. Arizona I get it. Was, this was a tough. This is the game that I'm. Th- I'm not sure either. I think they lose to Arizona. Wow. Okay. I think they lose to San Fran. Mm-hmm. I'll say they lose to Houston, mm-hmm. and I think they beat the Colts, and I think they beat the Commanders. But I think if they beat if they if they beat the Texans, they'll lose to the Colts. So it could be a flip flop. I think I could see them winning Arizona and beating the Commanders and losing to the Colts, Texans, and not. That is also another yeah, one that comes. I just think when you like Drew mentioned. You're getting a generation of problems. What Dallas has been saying for damn near two years, the fact that he's been glazing for that long, <laughs> saying here. that this guy, Caleb, can be that different. You've already got DJ Moore there. You might take another receiver with that a nine pick, if I'm not Good mistaken. Nine, yes. you know, who's Out of those three guys, they're all looking to be different regardless. you know. And then you already have guys there. You know, so I think you brought in another tight end. I believe they brought in Everett, Everett, Everett. Everett. to, to p- pair with Cole. You got a solid offensive line that will continue to get better because the talent there is really young. You know, you got a defensive line that performed well when Sweats got there, mm-hmm. and they also are young. You know, that's another thing. You got a secondary. Jalen Johnson's coming off a career year. You know, so this like this is a team with youth with a little different style to it. They're young. You know, they've had some doubt with their young players. Tyree Stevenson is one of them. But I think you're bringing in Caleb, who is supposed to be generational. If he's even if he's close, if if he's what C.J. Stroud is his first year, then his team is a playoff team. I don't think we can deny that for sure. And if he's generational, if he's even better than that, then this is a sneaky team. But I think at minimum, these teams should be thinking playoffs. We won seven games last year. We had the QB controversy when Justin Fields went out. People were saying Baggett played better. And then the defense had a, a great uh, end of the year and Fields was not playing the best and we could have made it last year. The next step should be thinking, we should make the playoffs next year. You have to because you have to see – Realistically, you have to see what you have with Caleb because you have a division with Detroit, with Green Bay, with Minnesota. Minnesota's trying to get a quarterback. Green Bay has their quarterback. You know, Detroit, Jared Goff isn't old, so he's going to be around for a good amount of time, and they're always fishing. Their talent is really young. So you can't afford to just continue to be last. Something's got to give. If Caleb is the guy, then they should definitely like win some games. I think bringing in Shane Waldron is going to be t- huge, too, for your coaching staff. Mm-hmm. You know, he was the one who revitalized Geno Smith's career. That was really the biggest question going into this season was Caleb Williams, he's going to have some weapons. Granted, this was before the Keenan Allen trade, but even when it was just DJ Moore and you know a couple of running backs and maybe Mooney back, you still feel pretty comfortable with that situation, but it was really the offensive play caller. And I think in Shane Waldron was probably the best option available in terms of who was available on the open market. And I feel like a lot of the Caleb Williams discourse around him as a person I almost just like throw it away because it feels like it's just from a lot of fake people in terms of like RG3, if he wants to have his opinion on what the Bears have done historically at quarterback has not been good, 100%. But you also have to give them credit for what they've built up this season. This is not the same Bears teams that they've been drafting quarterbacks in the first round. They've been trading for older guys, whether it was Jay Cutler. Um, They've tried different things, but now you have a generational prospect, like you guys have mentioned, that is in your lap. And the fact that so many Bears fans are just no against thanks. it, have no, no interest in it, I get it. Justin Fields, the thought of Justin Fields, I was there year one. I had some hope going into this past season, going into year three. I thought year two, especially um, back half of the year when he was running crazy. I thought there was some hope there. But we have three years of tape on Justin Fields. And, and the sad truth is he just he really hasn't got... He hasn't gotten better to the level you have to see to be a franchise quarterback. If the comp for your quarterback is Josh Allen, because Josh Allen struggled for like a year and a half, now he's a top two quarterback in the league, I just hate that. Because for every Josh Allen, there's going to be a thousand dudes who were bad for three years, and then they continue being bad or being a backup level quarterback. That's the more likely situation out of the two. And for Caleb, whoever you look at, whether it's most media people, people people who cover the draft, analysts, there's rarely, if ever, a negative thing said about him personality-wise. Coaches have loved him. Teammates have loved him. This is at USC, this is at Oklahoma, this is at high school. There's been nothing from his supporting cast, outside of his father, who has some very strong opinions, but it's your, it's your parents, you can't decide that. LeVar Ball had some feelings about mm-hmm. his kids too, and they worked out okay when they're on the court. But from his coaches and his teammates, the fact that they speak so highly about him as a leader, as a person, as a quarterback, that should tell you all yeah, all you have to know. For if sure. he wants to paint his nails, if he wants to cry because he lost a game, he's a 21-year-old kid, and this means everything to him. I- I'm happy he's out there. 
being upset after a loss. Facts. Like that's the best quarterbacks have the most emotion. Tom Brady, Mahomes, Lamar, like all of these dudes have all of these emotions, whether it's on the sideline before a game, after a game. Maybe they don't cry on the sideline, but who cares? He was 20, 21 years old on a national stage. That was his only chance or his last chance rather to get to the college football playoff. He knew that was his last year at USC. He knew this was his last chance to win a championship and he got upset. Kids 20, 21 years old. If you have a serious problem about how he dresses or what he does with his nails, I think you need to look into the mirror and figure out, you know, the issues you have with yourself. The NFC North is going to be one of the best divisions in football next year. And that's why it's interesting to see what the Vikings are going to do at quarterback. They traded with the Texans. Now they got two first round picks, the 11th overall and the 23rd overall pick. Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock draft had Caleb one, Drake May two, Jaden three, and the Vikings trading up at four for McCarthy. And where the Vikings sit at now is very similar to where the Niners sat at before they traded up to go get Trey Lance. Mm. And I just I think this this situation is interesting because right now JJ McCarthy is the better favorite to be the Vikings' next quarterback. So let's just work under this assumption that the Vikings trade up to the fifth, fourth spot. They draft JJ McCarthy. What are your thoughts on it initially? Wait, do, do they need to go to five to get JJ? From if, all the reports, as of right now, jump yes. the Giants at six. I, I, listen, there's there's not many. I hate that for New York. Uh, I seem to love him. There's not many situations better than Minnesota if you just plug in a quarterback. You for know, sure. you got Jettis, the best receiver in the world. You know, you just brought in Aaron Jones. You know, you have great coaching out there. You got Jordan Addison, a rising star in this league. TJ Hawkinson, one of the best tight ends in the league. So for just just a quarterback who is, I'm a pure passer. I want to come in. I want life to be easy. Well, you've got those weapons. It, it, there's nothing easier than that. You know, so Chicago and Minnesota, shout out to them for creating perfect scenarios for the quarterback. But um, for Minnesota, I mean, I've watched a little bit of J.J. He, he, I've seen the comparisons from J.J. He seems like the, just the boring, prototypical game manager like quarterback that they've been talking about with a little bit of athleticism to him. Uh, Michigan fans haven't been too big on him because in reality they were so dominant he didn't have to do much in his like last year. He's talking about me which, right now. Which, yes, I am talking about you for sure, but you're my Michigan guy, so Amen credit to, that. to you. Um, and then I've seen the hype with Jaden Daniels, you know, the athletic, tall, lanky freak that can – you know, kind of bust off 40-yard plays and run with the run with the wind. So, like you said, we're going up the assumption that J.J. McCarthy, they trade up, they get J.J. McCarthy. I wouldn't be too mad about it. I think it's about time Minnesota does try and go get a quarterback, you know, and I understand the situation where you want a quarterback who can give you athleticism but also can help you from day one, who also can be, you know, just a game manager at the moment. And then when you got weapons like that, I don't think – you know, the the drop-off from picking either Jaden or J.J. is going to be too massive when you have a situation like that. And I think based off the coaching staff that they have, if they believe in J.J. that much that they traded up for him, I trust in them to make that decision. Uh, this could be a case where the Giants beat the Vikings again. Reports coming out that the Giants are interested in J.J. McCarthy and the pick six. It's been one of the worst kept secrets that the Giants are looking for a quarterback. Now it's forcing the Minnesota Vikings hands to, to now trade up to number four to select a quarterback that I personally believe was going to be there at pick 11 for them to just sit there and get J.J. where they, where they stand right now. But apparently that's not the case. Uh, I don't love this trading up to four for J.J. To me, I love J.J. McCarthy at Michigan for what he was able to do for us over there. We are able to win a national championship. But you look at those three games where Jim Harbaugh was suspended. He was regular. This is where I felt like, well, you didn't have the guy that was kind of guiding the ship along. You showed me not much that you can overcome. I will say in the playoffs, J.J. did play well. In the college playoff where it mattered most, he did play well. But again, a little ironic. Jim, of course, was back for the playoff run, and they were playing some high-level efficient football. Uh, it also helped that Blake Corm was the best running back in college football as well. Uh, but at the same time, I, I still feel that J.J. is a little bit raw. Uh, he is athletic. That is one of the main things that you can look at him. He is athletic. He can get outside the pocket, extend plays. Uh, I just don't know if I'm all in on that, especially Drew, trading up to pick four. Question. You said, JJ, and I, just question. Um, mm -hmm. You said JJ, he looked really regular without Harbaugh when oh, he yeah. was out for those three. 
So do you not trust in O'Connell? O'Connell enough to where it, you, it's just the NFL. Okay, it's the NFL, uh, and and there that's the difference there. I do trust O'Connell, no and doubt. Now you're about upgrading it. from the coaching to now you have Jettas, you have Addison, you have TJ. It's like again, but the woo. processing from college to football no, yeah, is understand. difficult. It's, it's, it's for sure. It, different. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's going to be put in a situation where he is going to start. I think Sam Darnold will get the reins mm-hmm. to start off, and then. If they feel like they will make a change, it'll be midseason. Uh, but all in all, right now, the, the the Vikings, I don't look at it where we currently stand right now as a good move for them. Mm. I think you kind of just play the board, see what happens. I get quarterback is you can't win anything without it. That's that's the that's the truest point that there is. But trading up to number four to get the fourth best quarterback in this draft, I think that's tough for me to sit with. I feel like uh, sometimes it is a waste of time when we think of other scenarios that involve not getting a quarterback because a team doesn't get two first unless they want to draft a quarterback. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe they are eyeing a prospect at the 11th pick and you draft Michael Penix at 23 or Bo Nix at 23. You know, that can always happen. I think when we get around draft season, quarterbacks rise up like crazy. The stock goes up and then draft night we see it kind of plummet will levis is a recent example of that every quarterback from the 2022 class outside of brock purdy was the last pick in the draft but kenny pickett malik willis was supposed to be a uh, first ritter. rounder mm-hmm. desmond ritter was kind of getting hyped up um jj mccarthy if you told me he's a second round pick i love it i don't love it if he's a he's a top five pick i don't and i think there are some serious concerns with his game i think uh processing the field, anticipation, uh, his inaccuracies. There is just a lot of inconsistency to where I don't think he should start right away. But then you look at the positives of J.J. McCarthy. He has the size. Yes, He was one of the more talented recruits at his position. Um, when he's accurate, he's really on. He has a live arm. He has, he has plus athleticism. Uh, and he's young. He's the youngest quarterback of these draft eligible quarterbacks, he's only twenty one years old. So you're saying, so you're talking to yourself into you're talking yourself into a quarterback that can still develop and can still improve, and that's what you're buying into. But sometimes teams get stuck in the mud when they bank on too many traits. Mm-hmm. And JJ to me has not shown enough on his film to be a top five pick in this year's NFL draft. If they are going out and getting Drake May. I love this move. I think Drake May is that talented. When you're in a division like this, you have to think about it from this lens. If I'm drafting this guy, can he compete with Jordan Love? Can he compete with Caleb Williams? Jared Goff is kind of an outlier because, you know, he's a great pocket quarterback, but he's not one of the uber talented or top five quarterbacks in the league or has that type of potential. But can he even compete with Jared Goff in a division? And with J.J. McCarthy, I don't know if he screams that. And I don't even think they like Jaden Daniels because Jaden Daniels doesn't target the intermediate areas of the field. Uh, 9.3% of his dropbacks were between the 10 to 22 yard area of the field. Mm -hmm. Kevin O'Connell, that Rams, Sean McVay, West Coast offense, it targets the middle. Jaden on his film has not really shown that. (coughs) So for me, I kind of feel like the J.J. McCarthy stuff might be a smokescreen. And I think Drake May might be their guy. If they drafted J.J., it would be a real head scratcher move. I'll definitely have faith in it because it's Kevin O'Connell and I trust that regime. Me too. But uh, I would have to see it to believe it. It's hard to evaluate quarterbacks. That's why when we said the Vikings signed Sam Darnold, we, I shouldn't say all of us, but at least me and Joel got a little excited just because the situation's so good. Oh, yeah. Right? Like it's it's so hard to predict what quarterbacks can be great, what quarterbacks can be bad. I mean, you look at Zach Wilson's draft class, you thought damn near all of them would be good. And now there's one remaining starting quarterback from that draft class. And all of these guys had hype for different reasons. And all of them were, were praised up as franchise quarterbacks. We have a very similar situation this year where you know you have a top three that might go one, two, three, just like we saw that year with, with Trev Zach and Trey Lance. And this year you have Caleb, Drake May, and Jane Daniels. And more often than not, it ends up being the situation 
is the deciding factor whether you're great or not. Trey Lance is kind of the outlier where he was put in the perfect situation. Um, and whether it was play, it was injuries, and, and drafting Brock Purdy with the last overall pick, all of that came together and it didn't work out for him. But almost every other situation, if you get drafted to you know a really smart head coach, you have great wide receivers, it is going to be pretty hard to fail, even if you are kind of an average prospect. So ideally, if I'm the Minnesota Vikings, I would be trading up for Drake May because to me, he feels like more of a difference maker than J.J. McCarthy. And the timing of the trade is also a bit curious too because I remember the trade Lance trade. I believe it happened at Zach Wilson's pro day. I want to say it was at someone someone's big pro day. So it wasn't you know on draft night. It wasn't even like a week or two prior. It might have been like a month before the draft. But they made this move to acquire pick twenty three, but haven't made that subsequent move to move up into the top five or wherever wherever they think they have to move up to. So that kind of tells me they don't really know how the quarterbacks are going to go. They're like, we don't want to move up to five. And then the Giants move up to four. And now we're screwed. And we moved all of these draft picks. And now we got to either trade back down again or not take a quarterback. So I still think the Vikings aren't entirely sure what's going to happen. The only thing I'm pretty confident in is that they're not going to keep both picks. It, It seems very strange to make this trade in March for pick 23 when... Predicting the first five is hard enough. Predicting the top 22 and being like, we need to get 23 because our player is going to be there. You typically make that move on draft night when you're trying to trade up from the second round to the back of the first to to get that quarterback on the fifth year. So that's the only thing I feel pretty confident about is there is still another move to make. But just like us, I'm not sure if Minnesota knows what quarterback's going to be available either. How much do you think they would have to trade to get number two? Oh, oh, number two? Oof. I don't know if number two on the table. Because you talk about they should be moving to get Drake. So. There's been a lot of rumors about the commanders loving Jane Daniels as well. So maybe ah. it's three. Well, I'm saying two to be safe. If I'm the I Patriots I just realistically and Drake don't falls the into my lap, how do you pass on Drake? I think the third overall pick could be shopped. The mm-hmm. Patriots, they could shop it. If Drake is there at three? Yes. If Drake's there? Yeah. Uh, their front office, um, the general manager, I'm forgetting his name, but he has made it a point of emphasis to stockpile draft picks. Patriot, Jake Elliott? Yes, Jake Elliott. He wants to stockpile draft picks and keep adding more talent. The Patriots, although we know the quarterback is a need, there are just so many other holes on that team as well that I could see them taking this year to add those position groups they need and then next year or the year after targeting a quarterback. To move from 11 to 2, you're probably going to up 11, 23, and probably a couple day two picks. That's what, I don't know if you have to give a third. So would you you would for Vikings wait to see if they take because if, if the knows. Commanders take Jay in that too, then you try to trade to the Patriots because if you talk about the, they're sure. shopping that pick. Trade Lance was three first, right? To move from they were around twelve. I oh yeah, was three first. So, Dolphins okay. got absolutely blessed. So maybe you do have to give up a twenty twenty. That's a, a lot of assets. But Minnesota, I mean, they're in position where they can make that aggressive move because mm-hmm. they made a bunch of moves defensively. They were still a strong defensive team last year, and offensively, I mean. You could probably use some work on the offensive line, but weapons rise, like wide receiver, tight end, running back, you're pretty much set. So it, it is the the kind of rare situation, similar to San Francisco, where you don't want to give up draft capital just to give it away. But when you're in a situation where you have so much other talent around, it's like, we need to get that quarterback. Yeah, it sucks. Because I think that uh, it's hard to see a world where the Bears miss on Caleb because yeah. I think Caleb is just that good. Uh, but there is a world where the Vikings could whiff this pick. And I, I hate that for, for the Vikings and their fans and Kevin O'Connell. Whiffing in terms of like they're gonna trade up to four and McCarthy isn't and Oh, they just take good? the wrong guy. Or, okay. They they the guy they take just ends up not being that good. But then on the flip side, they could take the guy that ends up being really good. And who knows who that's gonna be. But I, I feel like it's tricky. I I do agree with your point that they're not attaching themselves to a decision. We saw the Panthers trade up in the draft last year. They weren't sure who they wanted. <laughs> exactly. They didn't know who they wanted. So they were scouting everybody on the fly. They made the wrong And pick, the man. entire organization was split on the pick because there have been reports that Frank Reich wanted C.J. Shroud. Yep. The owner, David Tepper, wanted Bryce Young. So they weren't all consensus on one guy. Mm-hmm. And they made that trade. And they gave up a ton. And Bryce Young, I still think, could be good. But... He's not a CJ Shroud. No. So uh, I think the Vikings are not tying themselves to a decision too early. They're still a valid in all quarterbacks. I think they're having a private workout 
with J.J. McCarthy. And if there's one guy they really love and feel like they got to move up to go get, they're going to go get him. And they lost value on that trade in terms of like trade pick value that Jimmy Johnson came up with all those years ago. They lost pretty significant value in terms of moving down from 23 or excuse me, moving up to 23 and giving up those seconds and future seconds. And you typically only do that if there's a player at a high position need quarterback, receiver, edge corner that like you need to have that guy. Before we move on to the next topic, I just want to let you guys know we had two basketball topics planned for this episode. Panic meter for certain teams and the Pelicans being dangerous. We will talk about those two on the next podcast, which will be only NBA. We're going to wrap this show up with some New York Jets talk, Mr. Dells, because Love it. at first we was free agent losers. Undoubtedly. Then we started getting some chicken. We started winning some games, baby. Tyron Smith, hypothetical games, out that is. Tyron Smith adds a couple games to the I think season. So. Mike Will went healthy, adds a couple games, adds a couple wins Can't go to wrong. the season. Mr. Dells, I feel like you have some narrative to shatter, you know, because I, you can feel my pain as a Jets fan. I can feel your pain. Undoubtedly. Whenever we make a great signing, oh, that motherfucking injury prone anyway. <laughs> oh, he's really not that good. Oh, you're only going to get six games out of him. If any team signed Tyron Smith, it was an A-plus signing, depending on the money. The money we gave him, A-plus. If the Chicago Bears signed Mike Will, we would have been like, oh, man, it's Mike the Will's a— receiving core in the NFL. It's a great Low addition key. for the Bears. But if it's the Jets— Oh, it don't matter. Oh, it don't matter. And I'm just tired of it. You know, <laughs> Mr. Dells, you know what I'm tired of? I'm tired of people hating on the Jets. I don't know why they hate. What the hell had the Jets done to get hated on? What we, we, we do is suck. We're not a we're not the Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs of Dynasties. That's the facts. <laughs> All we we're just a fan base starving for some they goddamn dubs. Bill. We haven't made the playoffs since 2010. Mm. We draft the quarterbacks that didn't pan out. Sam Darnold, Zach Wilson. You know. Teams, right? F fans should be like, yo, man, we room for the Jets to do good because they've been bad for so long. The Lions were a Cinderella story. Everybody wanted the Lions to win. Where's where's that energy for the Jets? People don't e like Everybody Rogers. always hates the Jets. They don't like Rodgers. That also adds to it. I feel like they hate on the Jets before Rodgers. But you're right. Exactly. Rodgers brings a lot of hate. For sure. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a level with Compounded. you there. But why the hell... Do the Jets get so hated on? Tyron Smith, L, injury prone. Mike Williams, L, injury prone. Even though we've made some good signings, it's fuck the Jets. 100%. And to me, listen, <laughs> I will say this. We have won the offseason. Yet again. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we're, wow. we're like no, I'm saying, five time offseason. You're, you're, winner, you're winners. I'm, no, I'm not saying we're winners. I'm saying the Jets in recent memory, all we do is win the offseason. Oh, okay. And I can understand people getting annoyed that. All Jets fans talk about is the offseason. We won the offseason, and it hasn't translated into a playoff appearance. And I feel that pain because, for me, I'm tired of winning the offseason. I want to win a playoff game. I want to have a home playoff game. I want to get to that position. I want to dethrone the Buffalo Bills because I know if the Jets with the healthy Aaron Rodgers, if they were in the positions of the Miami Dolphins last year, we don't choke that. We don't. Okay, you don't see. just hold it down. Uh, and this is where I have my issue because, Joel, for as long as you've known me, have I ever rooted against the Jets? I wouldn't say so. No. We have a, we have a bit of a... I've actually uh, been pro-Jets. Well, well, I, I feel like not. I've been more pro-Jets. Yeah. But that. the issue that comes to, to, to me mm. is that I have this fucking guy over here <laughs> that just loves to throw shots, Percy which yeah. makes sense. You're a Broncos you're a fan. Jets Why fan. do you care? Agreed. It's an AFC East team. It's but my you're not, you're not coming at the Dolphins because of the Dolphins. You're coming at the Dolphins because of Tua, and that's where I take issue. I'm a, I'm a Jets guy. I don't like the Dolphins. AFC it's East. as simple as that. But you like the Blood Bills. at the table. You like no, the no, Bills. I don't like the Bills. Josh Allen's just electrifying. That, that's what he is. I you liked Mac Jones. You did like Mac Jones. Mac Jones, Alabama See, legend. What are we doing? Listen, what are we talking what are about? We doing? Listen, what are we talking about? Who's more of a legend at Alabama? Alabama? Fucking Mac Jones or Tua Tonga Vailoa? Mac Jones won a championship too. He was a true rookie. He went in at halftime and won a game. Mac Jones ain't need to come in at halftime. He had that shit held down. And one's by way halftime. cooler. One's way cooler. It's not even close. But but Dales, my question is, why is it fuck the Jets? Why is it always why is fuck it? the I Jets? I think the answer just came to us. Okay, oh, we're good. I don't know if you guys are gonna keep screaming at each other. Why is it fuck the Jets? It's always we make. Like, I think this isn't my I segment. I think sorry, it's a lot Joel. of things. I think number one, we go into damn near every off season or 
when we recap the offseason, rather, we always win. The Jets when, won. It's the Le'Veon Bell splash shine. It's the mm. Tremaine, Tremaine Johnson. It, it's the C.J. Moseys where we spend all of this money and get these high-caliber players, and they don't turn into any wins. Um, I, I think that's I think that's one thing. I think the other is the fan base. The, the Jets have a, a very... Uh, what's a nice word? Rabbit? Passionate. Rabbit? I don't, passionate. We could put that, you know, politically o- over, correct. Over passionate? Yeah, you know, they could get in their heads a little bit. Combative. You could say there's no way you could go 0-5 and, and you go 0-6 and, and scream at people. Won't say who, but sometimes that happens. Uh, mm. I do think the fan base has Call a lot to do with stupid. it. Because mm. we talk a lot of shit for a team that has won basically as little as you can over these last 10 to 15 years. We have the longest playoff drought in NFL history. I think in sports history, actually. Excuse me, not history. Current. I'm going on 14 years now. Active. Mm -hmm. Right. But the way this Jets team is currently set up, if everyone stays healthy, I'm not trying to overreact, but it's probably the most talented team of my life in terms of being a Jets fan. Oh, yeah. I know if you look at those Rex Ryan years defensively, it was stout, but you could go bar for bar, whether it was Revis, Antonio Cromartie, DJ Reed, and Sauce. Okay, they're, they're not... Revis yet, but Sauce is the closest thing we've had to Revis. If you look at the defensive line, I don't think we had anyone as talented as Quinn and Williams as we did in those Jets years. Linebacker Quincy and C.J. Mosley are right up there with David Harris and Bart Scott, if not better. Um, And coaching, maybe you give the edge to Rex Ryan, but Robert Sala has been able to at least defensively shut down some of the top quarterbacks in the NFL week after week, especially this past season. The only real question about the New York Jets is two things. Number one, it's the health of your 40-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles injury, as well as the health of everyone else, but he's number one. And number two is that man who's going to be calling the plays in the offensive coordinator's box because there are still some real, real questions around Nathaniel Hackett. I do think this team is talented enough, even if Hackett is below average to bad, to probably still be in that playoff hunt, to probably be around that 9-10 wins, even if Hackett is dog shit. But it really comes down to, can Hackett either... One, taking some criticism and advice from outside noise because there's been there's been countless reports, the one that The Athletic did after the season was over, saying that he wasn't really taking it from anybody. It was really the Nathaniel Hackett show and how unprepared he was. Again, reports. Um, and is he going to be able to maximize the players they have around him? You know, I think there was way too many games where either Garrett Wilson wasn't involved enough, Brees Hall wasn't involved enough. They fixed that down the stretch of the season, but there were still moments throughout the season where you're looking up and Garrett Wilson has two or three targets at halftime. You're like, we don't really have anyone else to throw the ball to. So like a lot of other players, a lot of other teams trying to get to that next level, trying to either get into the playoffs or win a playoff game, coaching comes down to a lot of it. And defensively, I'm 100% confident that Robert Sala can shut down opposing offenses. But this Jets offense, regardless of how talented it might be, Nathaniel Hackett had one of the worst coaching jobs for the Broncos in NFL history. Ever. Last season, terrible offensive line. Zach Wilson was bad. We had two <coughs> weapons, maybe three if you throw in a guy like Conklin who showed up uh, the last half of the season, or really throughout Alan the Lazard, season. Bro. Um, there's still major questions there, and that's really the thing that scares me the most. Oh, Jets talk, man. It's always the Didn't same, it. same stuff, you know. Um, we beat you last year. And you. We oh. did. Hey, I got it. I take that. That's what it is. We win. As My team's table. fighting for worse than a league right now. Brother said they're winners at the table because they beat us. Listen, um, you your know, season I, ended in more disappointing fashion than ours. Congrats. Your season, your season ended week one. Yo, 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 yo. Quick question. Co- cover yours. Cover yours for a sec. Yo, your team won a championship in your lifetime, right? Duh. We've been there twice. Mm. Mm. Actually, in my lifetime, we've been there three times. Yeah, I don't count the first the first one. one. Yeah, right. yeah, I don't count because I wasn't there. Uh-huh. Um, you guys said it, man. With the Jets, same old talk, same old conversations. You know, uh, the Jets typically had a good off season. They got Mike Williams. You know, they got Tyron Smith. I do agree with you on one point, though. I think people very like they like to pick and choose put injuries with the player like sometimes you can't distinguish the fact that this player is really great mm-hmm. you know it's just he keeps getting hurt but every time he comes back he's still amazing you know, a really great really amazing i think that's why you were uh, talking about with tyron smith you know he's still a great player still a good player it's just the injuries of course hinder that and i think last for, year he was elite yeah, mike he's williams is, is a five, seven, mike williams is a good player you know so i think when you just take into account the players in which you got him for Hundred percent, A plus. Like you guys had a great off season, but of course the injuries play a factor. Because if I'm not mistaken, Mackay Becton was also injured too. He's yeah, been yeah. dealing with some injuries. Like he wasn't know. good when he played this yeah. past year. Uh, would, would, would you hate? Maybe that you're thinking part? about AVT. 
AVT was also mm-hmm. another one. He was one. awesome. But yeah. I think with the Jets, it's really, like you mentioned, it's going to come down to Aaron Rodgers. You know, the guy who, unfortunately, he went down in the first week of the season, which was supposed to be last year, kind of got a breakout year to kind of have a better offense. Sorry, man. With the Jets' defense being as elite as it's been for the past two or three seasons. Now you're coming into the same idea, same you're vision. You're crying, Joel? What? What the fuck <laughs> are you doing? Are I'm you just crying? reminiscing on that moment, man. That shit hurt me. I'm coming out of the tunnel with that flag, man. That was the actual Legendary. championship of the, the Jet season. 9-11. God, that shit hurt me, man. Yeah, that's tough. He's about to cry again. I get it. Well, y'all won that game. That was, that's game. why, that's that's why Honestly, I wasn't balling the best game of the year. The punt return in the overtime. They, they, I understand because if I had the best quarterback that I ever had in my franchise's history, and on the first drive of the game, he tears his Achilles, I'd be the exact same way. Because unfortunately for this guy and this guy over here, all they've known is misery. Pain. A lot of it. Pain. A lot of it. And I'm, I say that sincerely. I'm pretty sorry. It's been tough to watch the Jets recently, and, and you finally had that glimmer of hope, and it got stripped from you the first week of the season. It's definitely hard to you watch. You got to stay optimistic. If you're a Jets fan, you stay optimistic. Yeah. The noise is the it's noise. Fine. I'm with you. I, I, I get it. I will say Tyron Smith is injury prone. Mike will where I wouldn't call him injury-prone per se. I think you put it perfectly. He plays through injuries. He always has something going on, but he he will play through it. I, I think Mike will, especially these last couple of years, he is and has performed when he's on the football field, especially this past season. In the couple of games that he played, the few games that he played, that's when we saw the Chargers offense, it's most explosive, it's most dynamic. When you have Keenan and you have Mike Will, that's a perfect compliment. Here you go, and you have a similar situation where you have Garrett Wilson, who's obviously the faster Keenan Allen right now, great route runner. Obviously, can take the top if he wanted to, but perfect compliment to 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 Garrett Wilson is Mike Williams. In theory, this is an obvious, amazing offseason for the New York Jets. But where I can level with the fans that are very critical is let's see it because we've been waiting for the result. Oh, me too. There's been no results. So what are the expectations, fellas? I mean, listen, we got to make the playoffs. playoffs. We got to win the AFC East, though. If mm. we're healthy, we're, we got to win the AFC East. Ah, you got to get through that man. And, and you I know, think expectation is playoffs. You win the AFC East, you're like, yo, we can we can do this for sure. Garrett Wilson can now move along, move move along the line of scrimmage, get those mismatches. I'm very excited to see how Garrett, Garrett Wilson, Wilson over Tyreek. Stats, we, we're back. Tyreek, I back. mean, Garrett Wilson's an elite receiver. Okay. So are we back with that? He could get them stats. Go, but you should have went to Stefan Diggs. Like that's where you should have went last year. And I, I tried to tell you, he, um, he had a thousand yards, no but terrible quarterback play. Still, we tried to tell you. Um, <laughs> I still think you need, and let me not say need. I still think you should bring in another weapon. I think they need another yeah, weapon. Yeah. I, I, I think I think 10. that's fine we to need say Tyler they Boyd, need okay. another weapon. I, I pick Tyler cool. Boyd wouldn't be the worst thing. Cool. I think at pick I like Tyler, ten, man. you need to go and you bring in. A wide receiver, and at worst, Brock Bowers. You take the worst of the three. I wouldn't even hate Brian Thomas at pick ten. There was some people saying that maybe we should just take a quarterback. So who I saw someone tweet uh, that. I forgot who did, but I saw someone. Listen, I'm, I'm not opposed to taking a quarterback. We need to. We need to know what be, life is like to, after Rodgers. Yeah, no, because we're going. We're going all in now. I don't want to go all in. Then the first round, be like, ah, we're not all in. We're gonna take a backup <laughs> quarterback. I feel like this. Roster and team can compete right now, though. I do, but if you could go out and get a player, like, for example, we drafted Zay Flowers last year instead of Will McDonald, and you could have went and competed right then and there. It doesn't change the outcome of the season, but it was just last year was all in, all in, all in, and then first round of the draft, we're taking a developmental pass rusher. Now, listen, I asked uh, Riv and Drew this question one of the last podcasts. I wasn't here. I didn't get your Jets bias in this question, though. It was uh, a... How many teams are the Jets better than the AFC? Where are the Jets in terms of where we look at the AFC contenders? You guys might have had a change of heart, change of answer. So maybe you guys' answers are different. You didn't ask me, bro. Oh, it was John. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was it wasn't. Sorry, Riva, I, I apologize. I would have. Okay, so no in the difference. AFC, <laughs> I think comfortably, these teams I like comfortably, I think I would still put the Bills above us. I give them that respect. I would put Baltimore. I would put Cincinnati with the healthy Burrow. And I would take the Chiefs. Outside no, of that, we could have conversations. Miami still, you have to show some respect. Uh, Miami is solid. They've folded down the stretch multiple years. Their offensive um, line is not that they've, good. They've okay. lost key I pieces. They've lost that first Wilkins. round pick to be an all lineman. Um, I think 
Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dels. And I was going to say, uh, against top competition last year, Miami straight up just wasn't that good. So, Dels, are the Big Jets Dallas. better Are the Jets better than the Texans? I think they can be, yeah. That's Fully what, healthy Jets. Them, yeah. Should be. Yeah. I think you're in that tier. I think that's where I would put you. You don't think they can be better than Bengals? Healthy? You tell us. Ah, dude, I don't yes. know. Hold on. Hold on. Texans defense got... I think it got better than Our last year. Our defense is better than theirs. Though. I know, but their yeah. offense... You offense. trust their offense more. You the should, floor yes. is so much higher. Because of Nathaniel Hackett, I saw my concerns. It's Aaron Rodgers, and, like and he is CJ. coming off a of torn yeah. Achilles. You're, you're going Same into year two with C.J. Stroud. I'm Theoretically, Tank should be better. The, he Tank the the did year. get injured, should be back. Nico Collins, we're, we're having conversations as a top 15. There is better than him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Nico's great. But Nico's still Nico's amazing in his great. own right. And Brees Hall is better than any running back they got. Joe Mixon, yeah. <laughs> we got the two most talented offensive players between it's, us and you can make, Again, You can make the argument C.J. Stroud is better than Aaron Rodgers. You can. you can. Yeah, you can. It's offensive coordinator, bro. Like, we know Bobby Slowick yeah, is correct. a really good O.C. That's he was really getting it. head coaching, you know, positions. Nathaniel Hack is not getting offensive coaching. <laughs> but I, I really feel soon. like it's Aaron Rodgers' offense. It is. Same thing with Adam Gase when he was with Peyton Manning. Like, you just let an all-time great go to work. I think I would go Buffalo. I think you still got to paint them as the best team in their division until somebody beats them. I will go Baltimore. I don't think they've lost enough to where a team like you guys can um, go over them. I would go Chiefs. I think those are the three. I would like. I don't have a. I don't have like any thoughts to be better than y'all at this mm-hmm. moment. And I think you guys are right there with like Texans, the Bengals. Um, I don't know why, but I, I still think Cleveland's in that tier too. The Would Dolphins? you have Miami? I think they're the worst of the bunch, and I'm not oh, even Miami? trolling. Yeah, I think they are the worst of the bunch. <laughs> they lost a teams. lot of pieces, man. They probably have the second best secondary in the AFC. Well, yeah, because the best is us. Yeah, yeah. No, well, Cleveland. I was thinking KC. Cleveland's up there. KC's up there. We're okay. Up there. You guys are up there. Yeah, we're Fair. ahead of the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, of exactly. Sauce and DJ, sauce, Reed. DJ Reed and Michael Carter. Oh, sauce is better than Jalen Ramsey right now. Yeah. Yes, he is. He is. Okay. Yes, he is. Marginally. No, no, not no. top five, top ten. Not marginally. Works, but sauce is just much Ramsey better than him. came back and was still Sauce, sauce is the best corner in the game, respectfully. If, if Jalen Ramsey was healthy, it would have still been one, two, flip-flopping all season long. Oh, so Pat is three now. Uh, Pat fell off Got him. a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'll say this about the Jets. If everyone stays healthy, right? Big Impossible. if. You make an argument that top ten quarterback. If they draft Bauer slash another receiver, top 10 weapons room, top 10 offensive line, and one of the worst coaches. Are you top 10 weapons room? No, the top 10 offensive line, TBD. If you get a healthy Tyron Smith, a healthy ABT, Morgan Moses, This is the best case scenario. Again, that's why I said everyone's healthy. All right, apologize. That that is a top 10 offensive line. The Jets, if they're healthy, should be contenders in the AFC. They should. Like 100%. We should be contending. Your defense is too great to not be, especially if Rodgers is healthy. We beat Buffalo last year, beat the Eagles, damn near beat oh, KC. I mean, we were going through wow. the gauntlet of a schedule you with Zach Wilson. Buffalo every year, brother. Okay, that's one, of the, that's one of the contenders in the AFC. Uh, do you, do you smell this year will beat the Dolphins base. with two healthy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's if something Rogers they got us right now. Dolphins have gotten the better of us. If the Jets uh, are healthy, you are officially becoming the third best team in the division. All right, stay on that side. I will. Good. As long as they're healthy, which unfortunately I don't know if it's going to happen, I think I'll put them over you guys. Okay. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick Aside Podcast, episode 364. You can follow us on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Next episode, only basketball. Going to do Pelicans. How dangerous are they? Panic meter for some teams and much, much more. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next Santos, time. Santos, I love you.